Look, the body cannot survive without sleep. Right now, you have an expiration date. No! Your body is going to shut down. Jay, come on, come on, stay awake! Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. This week, brought to you by Kaspersky Lab, Movement Watches, and Squarespace. Big thank you to our sponsors for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. I'm Brandon. I'm Chris. And I'm Gus. What was the first one? Kaspersky Lab. Ah, oh, I just didn't or see Gus. it. Or Gus. I was trying to say know. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, they're, uh, they're a new sponsor for us. Sweet. How's everyone doing? It, f- it feels weird to be back on the podcast after having been out. All of last week, I felt like I was I was on air on the live stream all week, except for the podcast. Mm. Do you find that if you spend a week away from the office, it feels like so much longer? It does because I'm you know, always clambering to get back for some reason. Well, are you like, sitting reason. down? You're like I don't I don't really know what to do or I don't remember how to do this. Uh, yeah, I think the the biggest problem I have lately is I feel like every time I travel, when I come back, like uh, the Monday is you know kind of busy, and then Tuesday I book. We're going to shoot stuff all day. Mm-hmm. Like, that's how we shot um, Heroes and Halfwits. Yeah. I'd been out of the office for some reason. Then I came back, and I was like, all right, then all my Tuesday's gone with, uh, with shooting this. And we're doing the same. I'm shooting all day tomorrow again. It's like, I fucking don't learn my lesson. I'm we- the same, same way with Million Dollars today and tomorrow. And then, uh, and then I'm off again. <laughs> and a lot of times when you go out of town, you come back and you have an email from me being like, Gus, the podcast was a disaster. Yeah, that's why I asked Barbara to program the last one <laughs> yeah. instead of you. <laughs> she did a good job. Yeah, she's good. I, I take it you watch the entire podcast. I watch it. It's like, and I think you've commented on this before. Did you actually watch it? Yeah, about yeah. how weird it is to watch it when you're not here. Yeah, like you open up your phone and you watch it on the app. You're like, oh, it's weird that it's that time of the week and you're not yeah preoccupied doing something. And in my head, whenever I see a podcast lineup that I'm not on, I always think, oh, that's an old one that I wasn't on. But to, to see it and think that's the newest one that exists and I'm not on it, yeah, it's weird to me. You're not. Exper- you yeah. cannot contribute. Yeah, can't do anything. You ever watch an old one? Like, sometimes I'll watch old ones, and, like, I'll be listening to the conversation. I'll think, oh, that's funny. It may, it'll make me think about something, and then that's what the next thing I say like, yeah. in oh, the course of the conversation. Like, it, it makes me realize how consistent my mind works, how consistently it works. From I, one topic yeah. to the next, in it general, happens I again. do that with, yeah. with, with filming stuff. Yeah. Where I'll be, like, or, watching a performance, and I'm like, man, I really wish they, like, paused after this and then, like, picked up a glass. And I'll be like, and then I'll, off camera, I'll go, hey, on the next take, can you pause here and pick up a glass? And I'm like... Past me was spot on. Yeah. I think sometimes you could have the same problem with anything, no matter what. And then you like work through, you figure it out. And then you're like, wait a minute. Oh, that happened a year ago. And I came <laughs> to the same solution. The, the worst What's part is with my like, brain? when you're stuck, like you have a new problem, right? Yeah. And you're stuck working on it and working on it. And you just can't figure it out. Then you like step away from it for like 15 minutes. And you're like, oh, I know what the answer is. And yeah. you come back and it's like just like not focusing on it and not being... Not being, I guess, stuck in that same routine. I find that with edits, when I'm editing a... Well, typically, I just edit slow-mo guys these days. But uh, I, I never do it all in one sitting. I'll always sp- split it up into at least two goes, because then you can it's come back to it, and you're like, oh, I can fix all these problems that I was having with it, and there it yeah. is. It's ready. Or like, oh, this is awful. <laughs> what? <laughs> no idea. Have so, you had some moments where you're just like, oh, i got to start from scratch? <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like we've had a busy week or two here at Rooster Tea. Like, there's been... Like, normally there's a lot going on, but, like, even more so, it's maybe one of the craziest, like, weeks we've had. Because, you know, we did all of the E3 coverage in L.A. We did Let's just, Play Live in L.A. Just the week before, it was Camp Camp came out, right? Yeah, the and then we also have kicked off Camp Camp. Day five. Uh, and then Day 5 just premiered uh, this past weekend. And then there was a trailer for the ASMR doc that came out yep. today. It's like, there's so much stuff going on right now. Do you think at some point we'll just have to be full-time podcast people? Well, then, then we wouldn't have what? any stories from our actual <laughs> It would just be one week to the next. Like, what happened? Oh, and I was waiting for the next podcast. Well, <laughs> on the it, podcast it, last week. It was funny because, like, I mean, I, I, I was really busy, you know, with E3 and Let's Play Live. And I thought those went really well. But, you know, then Day 5 came out. And it was a project that I really had no involvement with at all. Like, I knew it was going on. You know, I kind of had seen some stuff. But I hadn't seen the first episode at all. So it wasn't until it came out on the website for everyone else that I was finally <laughs> able to... Yeah. To, to watch it, and I thought it was fucking awesome. You were involved in that, right? Yeah. Good job. Thank you. It was, Thank you. It was really, really good. So how many parts are in it? Is it like six parts? Six, okay, yeah. So there's 
there's six full episodes, and then we might have uh, some smaller kind of like side story episodes that are not full. You know, little nugs, little nugs. Uh, but yeah, so it'll be it'll be it'll be long. And the first the, whole the thing. first episode is available for first episode everyone. is up everywhere. So yeah, it was on our website, YouTube, Facebook. I think we were mailing DVDs to people. No, we weren't. <laughs> uh, but then after that, it's just going to be sponsors yeah, yeah. On, on the Rashid website. Yeah. Which, smart. which, yeah. Well, I think it was cool too because everyone got to see it, and everyone, you know, because it's a project too that's been um, gestating for so many years, and I, and it's like, okay, it's finally out, yay! And everyone got to see it, and it wasn't like a delay, so it was, it was cool. Yeah, everyone could see how good yeah. it is. Yeah. No, it was, it's, it's, it was really exciting. We were all sitting, you know, watching it. I mean, even though that we, we've all seen it a million times, we still went and, you know, uh, sat and watched it, and you know, ate cheese and wine. You got cheese and wine? Cheese and wine. Why wasn't I invited to this yeah. cheese and wine viewing? Oh, I, don't I mean, know. I don't know why. Because <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't have gone, maybe. <laughs> yeah. That might have something um, to do with it. But it's good, yeah. You know, props to Josh for, you know, because he's the, he, he, you know, directed that episode and is also like the showrunner for the whole thing. So. Yeah, I had him on like two weeks ago because I wanted to talk about day five with him before the show came out. And then we wrapped the podcast and he was like, we didn't talk about day five. I was like, oh. Right. <laughs> I totally forgot. Like, we got sidetracked into other, into other. Well, he topics. was on last week, too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but no, I'm excited because it's it's like they to me it's like I, I want to get to the next episodes and the next because it's like to me it just builds. It's one of those things where it's like I'm wiggling. Do you hear I can that hear squeak? your chair squeaking. <laughs> no, but, but you know what I mean. It's like you you want to like oh you want to get to the next part of the story. You get to the next part of the story. Next part of the story. You, you want to see. We want other people to see. It's chair squeakingly good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want that on the DVD cover. Yeah. Chair squeakingly good, Chris Maris. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it was like a, it was a long production, right? Like y'all shot for longer than Laser Team, I think. Yeah, like I want to say it was like forty nine days. Damn. More on screen hours. Oh Truly. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's essentially like three movies or something. Yeah. You know, it's like the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yeah, <laughs> but good. Oh, and then it tied. Hey. <laughs> I'm, I'm Lord kidding. of the Rings. It's good. Oh, speaking of Lord of the Rings, <laughs> All right. man, I've been uh, via Audible. I I've been, I re listened to Fellowship of the Ring. Uh huh. That is a fucking boring book. No, it is okay. All right. That book I, sucks. No, that no, book's it does not. terrible. No, 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 it's it a is. boring movie, too. Oh, my God. I, I mean, the movie, they at least added some stuff to make give some conflict. Do they have the no. big firework dragon in the book? It's yes, slow. They do. Okay, here it is. It's definitely a slow getting started, right? You know, there's a lot of talking, a lot of singing. There's a lot of singing. <laughs> there's a lot of oh singing. Oh, my God. I forgot how much singing was in The guy who does the audiobook, it, was it that, like, deep voice yeah. man who's like tra la la it's kind of fun to it's it's really exciting to listen to this pro- for an audiobook cuz it's, it's this old dude singing and i forgot how much i hated tom bombadil yeah you know t- i i i i don't tom is, bombadil is that a character that was omitted in the movie yeah for good reason and there's like two or three chapters with him it's like oh my god i get it so but he doesn't break? really affect the story at all no so it's one of those things where it's like it makes so much sense to cut tom bombadil and probably i mean from the books I mean, it's uh, whatever. I'm not. Gonna... There's literally no conflict, I think, in that first book, until like at the very end when Boromir tries to take the ring for himself. Oh, Spoiler: They're being hunted. How are the? Uh, uh, yeah, but there's never like any real danger. Like there's they, there's danger in the minds of Moria. Yeah, uh, there's and and they're being hunted at all times. There's no other encounter though. Yeah, but don't, don't they always I, have... I guess like when they're on the river, close to the end of the book. Yeah. The orcs are on the other side of the river. So they're like, uh-oh, there's orcs over there. Let's go to this side of the river. Woo, thank God we're safe now. There's a river here. Like, How are his impressions or his voices of different characters? They're pretty good. Can yeah. we have, like, 10-minute movie reviews where you just... Or book reviews on iTunes. <laughs> just download one for each movie. And it's just you with your opinion like that. Yeah, so I'm... I'm yeah, we should do that. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going into uh, the Two Towers now, but it's hard to... Two get... Towers is, is, like, my favorite. I know, they're good. It's, it's good, but it's hard. Like, I'm on such a downer after... Fellowship. I'm like, I don't want to do this. You made it through. To me, the fellowship is is that is the slow one. Yeah, it's it definitely is. <laughs> that Same was thing with the, the quest, movies. Well, just got to get through yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that, that was your. The quest. second one's the best, right? Movie wise, I, I think so. It's, it's my favorite book and my favorite movie. So, yeah, yeah. I think in the movie, a lot of the stuff at the end doesn't make sense because they cut some things. Uh, like the oh, whole, like, I always watch the extended version. So, oh right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we don't all have Chris Damaris time. You really like the first movie? It's so boring Shut and up. slow. I yes. <laughs> oh, are you talking about? No, 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 no Chris. We're Chris, talking okay. about no, the no, books, no, no, no. and you're talking about the movie. So we're having different. Well, like, you said it was like your favorite book in the movie. I've never no, no, seen no, you get aggressive before. That no, was no, awesome. No, no. Chris, <laughs> just told Brad to shut up. Seriously though, I'm just saying it's it's. It's okay. It's a safe place. You can you can admit it. Who is this? On Twitter, 
at All Purpose Nerd is saying, J.R.R. Tolkien was the kind of author who'd write a paragraph about an epic battle and one and a half pages about a piece of bread. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. He, he does, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Or about like the, the, the scenery and then not the things that are happening. Yeah, he does a lot of that, like of setting the scene and describing the background and then you're not really so much in the present. Do you ever mm. wonder what a movie would be like if the author directed it? If, of an existing oh, thing. It's happened yeah. before. Didn't, <coughs> didn't Stephen King direct a movie? I don't of his think own? so. He directed, didn't he? I would love to have it so that they just redo him. Like, I would love J.K. Rowling to do Harry Potter. Just do all the movies again. Just see what they're like. Yeah? Yeah, just well, make you, him herself. Well, you know, didn't she, the she wrote the script for the new Harry Potter movie, right? Oh, did she? she I think screenplay? she wrote the screenplay. I want to say, I might be wrong, but I think she like, it's like she didn't write a book. She just wrote the script. Director. The only thing he has ever direct. The only thing Stephen King has ever directed is Maximum Overdrive. Which, Not thinner. Which That's he classic. Did, which he did write and did the screenplay for. Mm -hmm. I've never seen Maximum Overdrive. 1986. Um, I think you've seen it with graphic novels. Wasn't the guy who did the, uh, who did the Spawn graphic novel? Todd McFarlane. Yeah. Didn't he? Didn't he do? Did he do the Spawn movie? No. <laughs> what the fuck am I thinking of? Anyway, <laughs> Sin City. That's what it was. Sin City. Who did Sin City? TJ. Robert AJ. Rodriguez? No, the other guy. The Frank guy who Miller? wrote it. Uh, he could Miller. Thank Frank you. Yeah, he he helped direct it. Right? <laughs> Frank Miller. TJ Miller. TJ <laughs> <laughs> TJ Miller is not yeah. a director, dude. He co-directed it though, right? There you go. Uh, Frank, Frank Miller yeah. made Sin City. I said Frank Miller, and then you were like TJ Miller. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Who's TJ? TJ Miller's the actor. dude, the yeah. comedian. Well, he's an actor. Mm. He was in stuff. Anyway, going, going back for a second to um, um, Fellowship of the Rings. Sorry, I got to keep talking about it now. Um, Fellowship of the Ring. I, I've is it Fellowship? You're right, Fellowship of the Ring. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know how. I've read this book before. I've seen the movies. I don't know how I never made this connection. Like they clearly tell you, but the book is so boring. I must have zoned out every other time. I never realized that Arwen is Galadriel's granddaughter. Yeah, Th yeah. Mm -hmm. There's all sorts of little like. You know that like um, all sorts of little like relationship things that you don't even, that you don't pick up on between the movies. I think honestly, I I enjoy the movies and I've never read the books. I find the the wiki fascinating, just more fascinating than the movies. I, don't, I like just reading about the characters. Really? And like what kind of like I wanted to know what Gandalf was. I was like, what is he? What the, oh, what the Christ is he? And then and he's get, got like a race of his own. And yeah, it's, there's like a rabbit hole too of other articles that you get linked to yeah. within it. You can you can die in with those pages. Die. You can just spend hours <laughs> and die. Yeah, yeah who was it? It was CGP Grey, right? He did that great video. Yeah, CGP Grey did the uh, the Lord of the Rings mythology explained. I don't know if you ever seen that video. Oh, I think I have. There's, I oh think yeah, it's a yeah, 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 I've seen that. It's yeah. really good. Like that was more interesting than Fellowship of the Ring. It'd be uh, a great primer <laughs> for reading the book or watching the movies. Yeah, it's, it? no, it's like uh, like a, probably like a ten minute wait to get it all explained to you. Like great, done. So it's pretty good, uh, but so I still love that that series anyway, despite how slow and terrible the first book is. Have you listened to the Game of Thrones uh, audiobooks? Oh yeah, a couple of times. Does it bother you the the way the narrator does the voices for every character, the, especially Tyrion, who sounds like a creepy child well, molester? The only thing that bothers Hell me yes. is that but those they were books for the yeah, the those show. books came out over such a long period of time, yeah. and I'm sure the audiobooks were recorded over a long period of time too. That sometimes from book to book he forgets the accent he was doing and the character's accent will change. Oh, really? Yeah, like Arya became Irish in the fourth book. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth one. Yeah, it's like all of a sudden like, oh, okay, that's different now. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's about the only thing that drives me crazy with that. Do you think they'll ever redo the audiobooks with the cast of the show? No. I think that would help sales. That'd be, you have to pay a lot of people. It's a lot of people, a lot of money, a lot of time. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of money you'd make back though. What if they could just take the dialogue from the show well, because there'd be so much dialogue missing. <laughs> it'd be like, it'd be like Macy Williams doing Aria, and then it cut to the Irish one. <laughs> and then the like, no, no, then like you get like uh, an impersonator to do the lines that they didn't do from the show, <laughs> and you just like mix them together. God, it'd be it'd be hard to do some of those characters because the voices are so great on the actors. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but it's uh, I don't know. I feel, I feel like the the uh, the guy who does the narration for the Game of Thrones books is really good. It's Roy Dotrice. We mm -hmm. talked about that before. Yeah. He plays the um, the pyromancer in... We actually were talking about it last week on the podcast, and I was complaining that I could hear other people talking on the... Sometimes on I the can recording. hear, like, paper shuffle. Well, I th uh, someone said something to me that ma made total sense. Someone said I was hearing the other side of the tape because mm. it was a rec recording from tape, like someone's cassette that they just uploaded. Yeah. Or given to Audible or hmm. something. But 
it's probably him reading on the other side because you flip a cassette. Yeah. There was something in Red versus Blue, right? Like there was a sound effect that had somebody talking or oh. a cough. That's what it was. Yeah, Someone it was coughed. the ambient noise for Blood Gulch. Blood Gulch, yeah, yeah. It was like every like two minutes you heard somebody cough. In oh, the in the game? No, no, like in our recording of it. Like we un we had been recording the game, but unknowingly we had a mic on as well. So you took a live mic as well as the game. Yeah, we didn't know. We didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> and then like every couple of minutes you would hear like a cough in the background. I always liked including goofs like that in the outtakes. Yeah, we did the too. That's why we did it. <laughs> <laughs> there was uh there was one where Jeff was doing a line read and he bumped his face on the mic or something. So I yeah. recorded it for the outtakes and had Griff slam into some like a box or something. Oh. Like that. <laughs> but I put it in. I always used to love doing little touches like that. Did you do the uh there was a line, I think, in Recreation where Joel's trying to do a caboose line and he just can't get through it. Yeah. And, like, the machinima for the outtake is just him constantly trying to do the line over and over and over. And then finally Joel gives that, you know, failure sigh and yeah. then caboose his I, I head. down the head. Yeah. <laughs> he, he actually sighed and caboose goes, <sighs> <laughs> It's like, <laughs> completely epitomizes Joel. Yeah, absolutely. Right. I always feel bad for, I don't know, putting stuff like that in outtakes. But no, I remember... That was really good, though. I remember... Whoever made the outtakes for Captain Dynamic was brutal to Joel because there was one line he was flubbing over and over again and he was getting annoyed and it was all left in. Like, it's all in the outtakes <laughs> and Joel looks miserable. I was just like, <laughs> Do we? I, it might have been, it was probably either Matt or Nathan Zellner. I imagine it was Nathan. Who put those together. Yeah. Way back in the day. Good times. People don't know this, but Nathan hates Joel. <laughs> there you go. And that, that's how it expressed itself via yeah, the, yeah. the Captain Dynamic outtakes. All right, here, let me, uh, let me read this thing here. Okay. Uh, I want to remind everyone, this episode of the podcast is brought to you by Kaspersky Lab. Thanks to Kaspersky Lab for sponsoring this episode of the Rooster Teeth podcast. Kaspersky Lab's award-winning internet security software gives 400 million users the power to protect their banking, browsing, shopping, and socializing from dangerous online threats. It gives you online protection when you're on your PC, phone, or tablet to protect your banking, browsing, shopping, and socializing from dangerous online threats. Kaspersky Lab's internet security software has participated in more independent tests, won more awards, and placed first more times than any other internet security company. Get 50% off Kaspersky Lab's premium software at Kaper <laughs> Get 50% off Kaspersky's premium software at Kaspersky.com and enter code RTPodcast at checkout. That's 50% off premium security software at Kaspersky.com and code RTPodcast. Thanks to our new sponsor, Kaspersky Lab, for keeping people's internet communication safe. Thank you. Um, I never knew it was pronounced that way. Yeah, it's, it's kind of an intimidating word. I, th I think it's... I'd always read it differently. Like I think it's... Kaspersky uh, or something. Yeah, it's, 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 it's one of the more difficult ones to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's like, it's like rooster teeth. Like, what, it just spawns like a whole other conversation. Yeah. Um, then one other thing I did want to mention is that if you're watching this episode on YouTube, just a reminder, we do stream these podcast recordings live Monday evenings at roosterteeth.com. You can click on the link below in the description for more information about how you can watch and get a 30-day free trial so that you can also watch us make flubs that get cut out from the final version. <laughs> and tweet us <laughs> And live. you can tweet us if Hashtag you're watching right now live. RT Podcast. People are already at it. I check. People they are. are crazy. Yeah, yeah but we're just they reminding in, them and we're letting the mm -hmm. other viewers know. Uh, so we have a guest this week, probably the most well-received guest we've ever had. And the most requested to come back. And the most of requested all to come time. back. Uh, we have Sally LePage somewhere off camera. There she is. That's you want to clear space for her? Why are there so Hi. many people? Hello. Hello. Oh my God, I'm going in the middle. Yeah. Okay. This is the first time you've been on the actual set, right? It is. Last time we were in some random bar. We, yeah, we Really noisy bar as well. It's South by Southwest yeah. 2015. We, we got to ask all of our stupid science questions to you. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I hear you have more. We have more. As if I didn't answer all of your questions the first time. Well, this is questions just answers just raise more questions. Chris mm -hmm. has no questions. Right? Chris's questions were all terrible. <laughs> I, they all got rejected. Which Sally I think looked at your questions and said you need to go to the doctor. Yeah, basically. No, and then and then and then. Well, I only heard one. One of them was like, "Why is toilet paper bad for your <laughs> asshole?" <laughs> How's that question? So then I said we weren't doing it before uh, we started the podcast. Mm -hmm. I told Chris we were not doing any of his questions, and he said. Well, can I still answer them? I have my own theories about these <laughs> questions. Chris, nobody, that's, that's what the podcast is always for, is for talking about. Just tell us about kind of your stuff. personal health problems, sure. Well, Why no, not? no, I mean, all right. Tell well, the world. So I, I feel like toilet paper ends up like <laughs> scratching your butt a lot. There has to be and, a better and, way, right? What well, do you mean scratching you, your butt? Like, all right, yeah, you cut in your anus? 
Well, it's just like if you're cleaning your butt and then it's just you keep going back and you're just like going back and going back. That's why I think bidets are so getting so <laughs> popular is because yeah. they don't they kind of bypass the whole like. Well, you just buy better quality loo roll. Oh. I mean, I think I buy pretty nice what toilet do you, paper. What do you buy? I don't know the one. Double, double I don't. I, I, don't I don't know the names of it. I just like buy one. That so, it's, but it's you know, not, but you not, know it's good. I know it's good because I don't buy. I don't buy the cheap one. I just buy like whatever one is like nice. The baby wipes. That's good. another thing. Would That's you not use? toilet oh, paper. Don't flush baby wipes though. Do not flush baby. Wipes. Otherwise, you get fat bergs, which are icebergs made of fat that clog up your sewers. Yeah. And people Fat have to, and people have to go down into the sewers with like pickaxes to oh. get rid of the fat. Because when people also pour down <laughs> animal fat, so <laughs> like after a roast, they'll pour all the fat down the drain. It'll solidify <laughs> with all of these baby wipes that have been flushed down the loo. Oh, they mix. And then you <laughs> block the entire sewage system, and this poor guy has to go down okay. and manually release it. I was hoping you would say instead of pickaxes that they had to have like blow torches and melt the oh. fat down. And just imagining that smell. That is foul. I think the smell is bad enough as it is. Yeah, that's awful. Well, <laughs> I'm glad well, we're here so we well, learned about fat birds. Well, and, uh, I'm going to Google search it. My question fat being bird. on toilet paper is like, obviously, back in the day, because you're. <laughs> <laughs> like with evolution and stuff. You want to see fatbergs? Know, there wasn't always toilet paper. Like, how did yeah. people clean their butt before? That was pop. Was the most popular method. It would be like leaves and ponds. Well, that's and what stuff. I was wondering. Well, in the Roman times, it was sponges, so natural sponges. And You're asking her the questions that I go. We can't I, I <laughs> <didn't clean them. laughs> But before that, I don't know. I imagine leaves, or maybe just your hands, and you'd wash it afterwards. <sighs> well, I think in some cultures, people still use hands, don't they? Ooh. Possibly, I don't know. You wipe yeah. with the left to eat with the right or something? You're still holding loo roll when you do that. That's. I weird. think it's a rag, and then right. they clean it afterwards, <laughs> and they just hang it on the string. A sponge sounds awful, though, because you get little... <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> no, I'm not, it's not that you're not serious. Like, can we move on to the real questions? Uh, I don't want to talk about the, wiping your butthole all night. <laughs> you asked us to come up with questions. Yeah, and I've got the questions. And I was like, I, I told Chris we're not doing his, and... <laughs> He did it, and it's here fine. we are. He's got it out of his system now, quite No, literally. he doesn't. I guarantee he, he does not. He just to afterwards. There's more. It's just festering in there like a fat bird. <laughs> I looked up Google images of fat birds. I do not do that. <laughs> that is nightmare fuel. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Could you burn it as fuel? It's fat. Possibly, yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Have a little fat bird candle. Stick a wick in it. Give it a go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You'd be like one of those joke candles that smells bad that people get. Okay. Some questions. Brandon, this is one of yours. Sorry. Has technological <laughs> evolution replaced biological evolution in humans? And then you elaborate. I need, yeah, well, yeah, an so, example. Say. I yeah. love this. This the elaboration that gets me. The, Brandon's really good with the elaboration. Yeah, this is, this is a kicker. So, say the atmosphere gets small levels of cinnamon along with oxygen and nitrogen, and I have a cinnamon allergy. Other people who are allergic to cinnamon and I would have died off if this would have happened during most of human history, thereby keeping the human gene pool from a potentially deadly genetic disease but now we just have to invent the cinnamon breathing machine and people would be fine i've never seen anyone misspell cinnamon that way <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault it's google ca or google die did cinnamon c-i-n-e-m-o-o-n yeah congratulations that's <laughs> would you say that brandon is the most unable to write that was, that's amazing company? he spelled it right also but then he spelled it cinnamon yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, it's part of the question. To your credit, Google does not think that word is misspelled. Yeah, I know. That's, that's probably why it was. Sounds like a kid's cartoon. I uh, check. Look, I look for red squigglies, and if it's not, they thought it was a proper like someone's Mr. name. <laughs> All right. So, um, so has technological evolution replaced biological evolution in humans? I guess. So, I mean, we don't really have. Sorry, my microphone is ramming into my chin. Apparently, my chin is more interesting than me. Um, so, we don't have. Cinnamon as a well-known isotope in the atmosphere. Well, right, but if it, but that's what I'm we saying. do have much more relevant things. Um, so, for example, diseases um, have. You could have asked, and it would have been a great <laughs> question. Um, have we got to the point where we've managed to technologically mean that we can live with diseases that previously would have killed us? Mm -hmm. Which is essentially the question you were asking. Which is a valid question, a very interesting one. Congratulations, Brandon. Well, if um, it's only no, 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 let me. Yeah. Why cinnamon in particular? No, well, no, it's just yeah, why uh, cinnamon? if it would only affect a certain group instead of those that group continuing to procreate with everyone else, they would naturally die, right? Thereby eliminating the problem. Whereas now it's exactly we can keep the same them from as a dying. Disease, but more less likely to happen. 
Anyway, uh, so, <laughs> so if there was a situation in which one group of people were more likely to die. Yes, that is what I'm dis I am describing. Let's take the example of asthma. So before we had modern medicine, children with asthma would die. Mm -hmm. Because there was no way to get around an asthmatic fit, they'd more likely to get diseases. And so infant mortality was huge. We're, talk we're only going back to like Victorian times here, so a couple of hundred years or so. Mm -hmm. And it's Queen Victoria, right? That, yeah, okay. Queen yeah, Victoria. Just, just, just pretty, it's pretty baller uh, having an age named after you. Yeah. It's awesome. Uh, it's all the queens, Victorian, Elizabethan. Um, and so in those days, you would have died. Now we have modern medicine, which is a technology. Mm -hmm. And so because of that technology, we have people alive with asthma that should have died. And so, yeah, technology is changing the selection pressures, the things that are killing us. And so in that way, we'll change so our evolution. maybe it doesn't replace biological evolution, but it <coughs> augments or helps it. Well, biological <laughs> evolution is kind of you reacting to your environment. But as humans, we have an influence on our own environment, which then has an influence back on us. Okay, are there any... Okay, no, never mind. I'm, I'm going to go right. down that, that route. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Well, <laughs> nah, okay. So do you think humans are weaker as a species because of our technology? So this was what people thought kind of at the start of the 20th century when a lot of this Darwinian stuff and genetics were both coming together. It then founded eugenics and Hitler, unfortunately, because mm. if you take it literally, survival of the fittest, then you could say that you, we want to breed out genetic diseases. But I mean, there's no need to if people can live. But as long as you can cure it, it's not, yeah, it doesn't really yeah. matter if someone has <coughs> asthma because they can just get a little inhaler and yeah, it's fine. Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah. On, uh, on Twitter, erock393 just tweeted, Googled fatbergs, I regret everything. <laughs> <laughs> we did warn you. We I did warn you. I told you not to do that. It was like when Jared Leto told people to Google, what was that wig? You remember? Was it the Merkin? Uh, what? The pubic wig? Yeah, it was gross. What's wrong with it? What? Okay, What's so, um, the so what, that answer you just gave mm -hmm. um, kind of ties into the next question Brandon had. Okay. Does Darwin's survival of the fittest apply to personalities in early human history? For example... Would Gus's disdain for hanging out in groups instead of a, a commute? This doesn't even make sense. Oh, I probably started editing and then I got distracted. Would Gus's disdain? <laughs> would Gus's preference for hanging out alone instead of in a community wipe him out during caveman times? Well, firstly, yes, there was selection on personalities. Interestingly, humans aren't the only species in which we see personalities. So a lot of my friends study great tits back in Oxford because we've got a big word Wait. where we study all the great tits. These are um, Wait, what? <laughs> great Chris. tits, you know, right? Y you know about great tits, right? That's another question. Gavin, what are great tits? It's a bird. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. That was because no, <laughs> I had actually a question about great tits. Great tits, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, you did. That got cut. But no, but Oxford <laughs> has some tits. great tits. Uh, has some blue tits as well, cold tits. So um, th they're a small perching songbird um, that comes to your garden. Um, and but they have personalities as well. So humans aren't the only ones with personalities. But humans are a really social species. The reason we've done so well is because we form these social groups and a lot of the time we wouldn't be able to do things on our own. So for example, if you're hunting for meat, one of the things that you can do is as a group of people is walk up to a lion. I'm not making this up. You walk up to a lion that's already made a kill, scare the lion away and take his food from him. Chris, how would you scare the lion away? With a group of people. Oh yeah. <laughs> exactly. Correct answer. Yeah. Very good, Chris. Basically you just have to walk up to it because there's so many of you it scares the lion away. Oh. If so, oh. Sorry, if a, if a great tit has mm -hmm. a personality. Yeah. Does that mean it's a person? No. Then why why isn't there a word for it? Uh, you'd probably call it like a titinelli. A, <laughs> <laughs> a group of behavioral traits. Fair play. Yep. I'm uh, glad you're here for that. I, w I would have just <laughs> stared at him. Um. So yeah. So if you weren't able to socialize, then you wouldn't get the meat and you die, for example. But that's why we have so many adaptations that help us to be in groups. So blushing, for example, they think is, it's a sign that you know that you've done something wrong. So please don't like throw stones at me and kill me. I know I did something wrong. There's no need to like kick me out of the group. 
for doing something really? wrong. And blushing is a sign. And crying is a way of, they think, possibly directing attention towards you um, when you need help. It's a visible cue. You can fake crying, but you can't fake a blush. Or can you? I've never tried. You can, like, pinch your cheeks, right? Like well, I mean, there's, there's blusher. You mean the makeup? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So were there other groups of people that didn't have these features, like people who didn't cry or didn't blush and they just didn't survive? And so like this got kind of possibly like smaller attributes ended up becoming species wide because they were more you're more likely to survive if you had that. Well, that is the general principle of evolution. Yeah. So, I mean, I can't tell you <laughs> <Sorry>. for certain <laughs> there was definitely a person back then that didn't have it and died as a direct result of that. But yeah, it's a small change can increase the number of kids that you have slightly. So on average, you're maybe like 0.1% more likely to have kids or something. But over evolutionary time, millions and millions of years, tiny, tiny changes in how well you do in having kids will make a difference to your species. What's mm. funny to me is to think like you talk about crying as a way to like <coughs> direct attention that you need help. And I think about... Um, like some work that people are doing in trying to make cars more user friendly. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, if we could make a frowny face or an unhappy face on a car, then people can relate to it. This is the thing. So they're yeah. designing robots with faces because humans are so good at finding faces and things. I think there's an actual a whole Twitter feed of faces and things. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, good. it's good. And like your American sockets all look like little unhappy faces. Um, because we're so designed to spot faces, part of our living in groups thing, but also part of a, is that a predator over there? It's kind of got a face. Um, that makes sense because people are starting to just communicate now with emojis. Emojis, yeah. Yeah, it's like replacing basic communication or language. I'm, tr I'm trying to pull out. And it is easier to, like sometimes I literally do, do want to send, but there's, it's so much longer to type that. Oh. Want to send what, sorry? What do you mean? Thumbs up. Oh. You, you, do you know what presets? Do you mean? No, I, I use the thumbs up all the time. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Before it, an emoji, it, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have... Oh, that's the Barbara oh, right. <laughs> So I've got a, a photo here that Barbara stole from me. <laughs> it's faces. It's two boxes yeah. that are like <laughs> plotting diabolically. Plotting. I made the front page of Reddit back then. I made the front page of Reddit. That's fucking my idea, Barbara. The best one I've ever seen, I think it was a, of a lamp or something. And it looks like a smiley face, but the cables are coming out of the mouth. So it looks <laughs> like a vomiting wire. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Looks like a fat bird. Uh, let's see here. All right, so I've got, I've got, I've got plenty more here. Mm -hmm. All right, I think the next one is also Brandon. <laughs> I'm going through all of yours first. Sweet. Humans you and dolphins. Get all the hard ones out of it. Do you think it'll be spelled correctly? <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know if there's any errors. I, I, it's, it's been hard to read your questions because sometimes they don't make sense and there's words misspelled, and I, that's why I've been kind of stumbling get, trying to get through that. Yeah. Okay. Humans and dolphins feel pleasure for sex. What about all other organisms? Do dogs feel pleasure? If is that why they <laughs> hump <laughs> legs, or are they taken over by pheromones from females in heat? So I guess, do other animals procreate for recreation and not just for making uh, making babies? So there are other animals that procreate not just for making babies and um, that have sex. So a lot of the time you'll have sex as a kind of power struggle almost. So in bonobos, they famously make love, not war. They have sex every time they meet as a way to settle hierarchies within the group. Bonobos are relatives of chimpanzees. Mm. They're a type of chimpanzee. <laughs> Well, um, the idea of instead of like oh, you and me, let's take this outside. It's like <laughs> let's shag this out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you think that's bad? So um, hyenas, the females have an enlarged clitoris called a pseudo penis. So essentially, the the, the women have dicks. Um, pseudo dicks. <laughs> pseudo dicks. And um, but that makes life easier. <laughs> the females are more dominant than males, so you have an alpha female leading the group rather than alpha male. And the males have to fellate the female each time they meet as a kind of dominance thing. Mm. It seems like a super outdated term, pseudo penis. Why? But isn't that a bit sexist though? But it, it's like a penis, but it's not a penis. I'm like Googling it right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so a female hyena the, the, could, the could literally big, say suck my but, dick. But <laughs> the weirdest thing is though, so it may sound good that you're getting blowjobs all the time if you're a female hyena. They also have to lay their live young through their dick. Oh. And in many cases, their penis oh, rips man. in two and oh. they bleed to death. 
and many of the... It's like when a banana splits, you were like grab possibly, it. Possibly, and, it... and many of the cubs actually suffocate inside their mother's dick. As it's split in half and bleeding out. Yeah. It, the kid can't even breathe. If it doesn't split and it just and gets that stuck. Make, as an evolutionary scientist, how the hell did that end up like, this is the best way to make babies? Rice knows. I don't know. <laughs> and yeah, like, look at each other like think this, this is a really <laughs> stupid route to go down right yeah like let's just have a route where most first well, not most but a large number of first time mothers die but apparently it works well there are a lot of human humans split a little bit too don't they yeah you get vaginuses um oh, oh what when the tissue between the vagina and the anus splits so it just becomes why would it do that because you're pushing a baby that out. That happens and I had no idea. That's disgusting. Why Your would childbirth you... is disgusting. Yeah, I'd heard, I've never heard of vaginus. Have you, oh, you I'm should not, live I'm with not, some I've, I've heard of this. I never have heard that term. Yeah. So it's like, the taint is gone. Yeah. No, degooching. No, <laughs> you've been degooched. <laughs> <laughs> Does it just burst or is it like a so-so? Is it like Hulk Hogan, like ripping off his shirt? Oh, and it just splits. <laughs> the baby's ripping it on yeah. his way. Ah! <laughs> Imagine having a... I don't know, a basketball coming out of your mouth and your <laughs> cheeks ripping. It's that kind of... It's because it's stretching so much... Like a boa the, constrictor. ...the tissue just rips. Yeah, boa constrictors, the side of their bodies will... The skin will split. Really? Yeah, yeah if they eat too much... Like, you'll... See, I mean, <laughs> it's okay if it splits. <laughs> like, there's a picture um, of Hulk Hogan being born. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, one, so the world's <laughs> most famous vaginus right there. <laughs> no, just imagine his nipples and anus, and it all makes sense. Yeah, just like that. So does it, does the female, uh, the pinochlorus, uh, pinochlorus, pinochlorus does it, it the splits pseudopenis. like a banana, right? Does it heal back? Uh, no, no, they normally die of blood loss. Oh. Yeah. There's no hygiene doctor. Do they doctor, know that they're getting into like, this? Cankles? Huh? Do they know what they're getting into when they get? Probably not. I don't know. They're like, you didn't tell me this. Is it like. Well, all the ones that it happened to died. Yeah. So, I don't know. So, uh, who is this on Twitter? At very manly Luhan says, "God damn it, my vagina is literally hurting with the thought of this." Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah, my my gooch started hurting. While we were gooch about that. did. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here's another one. <laughs> There's two more Brandon ones. First, next one from Brandon. Were dinosaurs the best at evolution until they weren't? They, <laughs> they. It's better. Uh, they get go. kept getting bigger and bigger <laughs> over a hundred million years. <laughs> and then they starved when the asteroid hit and limited the amount of food available. Could that happen, people? <laughs> oh, it's like no, it makes you sound like an idiot. It's because I deleted <laughs> fat people. I deleted the word fat. So could that happen? And fat I people? guess <laughs> I I makes forgot so much to re-edit it. I was like, that's unnecessary. <laughs> Compare fat people to dinosaurs? Is that what just happened? Well, I mean, the whole thing is like dinosaurs became so big, and then when food became more scarce, they, they there sustain. wasn't enough food to sustain them. But like dinosaurs existed for like, uh, what, a hundred billion years? This no, hundred million 100, years. Hundred million years. Hundred. I was immediately corrected. Hundred million years. This is gonna blow your mind. They dinosaurs were, still exist. Dun, oh, dun, in the dun. form of. <laughs> the well, yeah, form but of, it was like the birds, the like the kids. smaller, <laughs> the smaller dinosaurs that survived, right? Yeah, thanks. Largely speaking, yeah. Well, but it's. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, so it's, firstly big thing in the world of evolution. So for those of you that don't remember me from last time, evolution is my big topic. Um, evolution is not progress. So things don't become the best and then stop. And they're not aiming towards something. What I meant was they existed for such a long time. Yeah. I assumed they were able to adapt to their environment. You're you know, never very well. going to get perfect adaptation. Relatively. Other than no. Brandon himself, who, who is... <laughs> You're never going to get perfect adaptation, partly because you get arms races. So if you've got a, a dinosaur and a disease, how can both of them be perfectly adapted to each other? But has there so, been a, an, a creature or a group of a, a type of animal that have existed as long as dinosaurs existed on Earth? I think you could argue like microorganisms. There may be some. Yeah, come Wait, on. Yeah, it depends. Wait, I mean, everything is... So like animal, like big... It's like saying, okay, I've got a rainbow that goes from blue, from red to blue. I should know what a rainbow is. Um, <laughs> science! Um, and uh, is any part of it, is this end the same as that end? Well, things have been changing 
for all of that time, nothing has stayed exactly the same. So it's just at what point do you call it something different? At what point is it a different species? So we have these things <coughs> called living fossils, mm -hmm. which, uh, like the coelacanths, they're these ginormous fish, and they've got these bony plates like armour on their bodies. And we have fossils of fish that look like coelacanths from the age of the dinosaurs. Are they exactly the same? Probably not. Do they look to us, who humans that rely on sight a lot, very similar? Yes. But have things changed in that time? Probably, yeah, because they've had to adapt to different climates, different food sources, different parasites. Yeah, Chris, Chris like, is I, raising I, his hand. <laughs> You're not <laughs> actually in class, Chris. Uh, well, you can, you can just so you in. said dinosaurs still exist, and, I, and my next <coughs> question was, well, how do you define a dinosaur? So, yeah, so this is the thing. So, in biology, we like... I mean, everything's arbitrary, first of all because the whole point of evolution is that everything is connected, so at what point do you cut it uh -huh. up? It's always going to be arbitrary. But where possible, you like to take... You, you know the tree of life, right? So you've got all these branches <laughs> coming off. If you've got this one and this one, you want to have everything in between and not just randomly like have that one and that one in a group and miss out one in the middle. So you want mm -hmm. to take, say, all the dinosaurs, you go back to all the common ancestors of the dinosaurs, and then you take everything from that common ancestor, so you haven't mm. missed anything out. Yeah. For the science geeks, that's a monophyla. Um, and, and so if you take that definition, then go back through all the dinosaurs, and then go back out towards modern day, you're including the modern reptiles, the modern birds, and the extinct dinosaurs. Mm. And so under that definition of dinosaur, and the dinosaurs, um, themselves there were two big groups of dinosaurs the non-avian dinosaurs which died out the avian dinosaurs which included t-rex some of them died out some of them didn't die out and continued evolving so okay. yeah it does depend on how you define dinosaurs. most in common parlance dinosaur means the big things that went extinct but <coughs> biologically you can make a very sound argument to say that birds are dinosaurs does it ever happen in nature where so if a lot of evolution comes from mutation. Mm -hmm. All of evolution. Right. Can you ever get like a really old mutation come back? So something from 50 million years ago, could it just suddenly be born out of one of today's creatures as a mutation? I'm just like, Jesus, look what happened. As in something that's always been dormant or an, it's come back from Well, like nowhere. from itself. So like if a fish mm -hmm. shits out like the 50 million year ancestor of itself could well, that ever happen so there are these things called vestigial traits which are traits i was going to say vestigial traits of course you were you were going to misspell it though somehow yeah. <laughs> while saying it so traits that used to be adaptive that no longer are and so for example there are humans born with tails because humans have a tailbone no. the coccyx chris wanted to ask a question related yeah. to this but go ahead okay so so your tailbone is your coccyx which is really sore if you bang your bum it's that tiny little bone at the bottom of your um, spine. We have those, the genes to make the tail bones, even though we no longer need a tail. But sometimes a mutation happens so that those tail bones that are normally tiny, tiny and fused together so you can't see it at all, uh, extend to be more like your standard mammalian, like a rat's tail or something. And so you end up getting a tail on a human. Well, what's, what's average size bone? Now, is that when you're excited or when you're not excited? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I'm, now I'm worried. So, like, I don't know how long or if no, it's... As in, you, so these mutations, like, you actually have a protrusion oh, okay. with skin covering it. So years ago... Because I can feel a it. A long is. time ago, I, uh, I once had um, a girlfriend who... Congratulations. Thank you. Who um, <laughs> I thought had, like, a little bump, like a okay, vestigial yeah. tail. And I asked her, like, if she used to have a tail when she was younger, and was it, like, surgically removed or cut yeah. off? She did not like that. Yeah, I was going to say, did she <laughs> slap you off to your yeah. Here's the question. Did, was it, did she? No. <laughs> Which was like even worse. Did you have to lift it up if you were doing it from behind? No, <laughs> no it, was, it, was, it was not very big. I, I must have been drunk was at the she, time. Was she self, I mean, it was one of those things that other people. No, I don't think she had ever thought about it. Nobody had ever said anything. I was so just you were like, just like the dude who asked her if she had a tail. Yeah. Did you, did did you, ever, tail? you ever like pull it a little bit? <laughs> oh, that sounds no. Now my tail hurts. So <laughs> my question, my follow, my okay. My question that we had before this that Gus didn't like um, was why do humans have tailbones and can they be u utilized in some way or what can we do with them? So why we have tailbones is because we used to have tailbones. 
So if you think we used... Like bones in a tail. Is that what you mean? Yeah, as okay. opposed to... I don't know, because well, you, you said tail bones. You it's said quiet. tails, is what you're saying. Oh, so yeah, so we used to have... So most tails have bones in them. Okay. Um, and if you think of a monkey's tail, and it's, use, it's climbing in the trees, and if it's a prehensile tail, which means it can grab onto things, it's going to use that for balance, it's going to use that for swinging, and that was useful back then. We <laughs> no longer needed it, so we pretty much lost it, but we didn't lose it entirely. And so it gets to the point where you're no longer spending any energy and food and resources making this tail. So there's no reason to bother getting the last bit of it. Obviously, the evolution isn't talking about like bother and needing to do it, but yeah. there was no, it didn't change how many offspring you had, how many kids you had, whether you had that tiny little bit of a coccyx left or not. So there was no reason so, to get rid of it. But to me, it's like, it would I so would love awesome. a tail. Yeah. yeah. I, I, can I, we get it back? I would love a tail. But and it's I, like it's a vanity tail, right? Well, no, I want it like a practical tail that I can grab things Where would with. you put it when you were taking a dump? Well, if it's prehensile, it could be. It would have spin around. It, it would up. be wiping for me, dude. I mean, like, <laughs> come on. Oh, you're, uh, you're starting to sell me on this idea. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're talking about like which hand do you use? You don't have to use a hand. You got your tail for it. Could um, it be like an elephant's trunk and suck up water and be like itself? <laughs> yeah, day? yeah, it'd be a, it'd be a, a, a. It's a tail, not an elephant's trunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we don't know about the future of evolution, do we? <laughs> so we can, we so, can't predict that. Yeah. Or can we? It, it'd be cool, regardless. And one of it's like, why would we get rid of that? Like, what? Why would you get rid of the tail? It's just that you said it like we didn't need to ex 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 use energy to. Yeah. So generally, you don't want to have redundant bits to your body because it costs stuff to make and you're not getting any benefits back from it. But I think I would, and I think most people would. I mean, <laughs> it's, a lot it, of it's like when you're doing character creation in a video game. Yeah. It's like the tail costs a lot of points, <laughs> yeah. but you're really not going to use it very often. So it's like, I, I'll put the points in other things. I imagine yeah. it would get cold. It's like charisma. Or <laughs> <laughs> right. Or, yeah, it's like charisma in D&D. &D. <laughs> so can we predict a future evolution of the human race? based on everything we know about our past and where we came from? Not perfectly, no. Will there be but less are there hair? predictions? Are there predictions? Uh, hmm. Yes. Do, should you just take them with a pinch of salt? Yes. I mean, there are some that say that humans will split into like a subspecies and a super species with, because all of the rich, beautiful people marry each other and have kids with each other and all of the short, fat, ugly people. Did Hitler come up with this one? <laughs> it's, I mean, it's so stupid. I mean, that's probably not going to happen. Um, I mean, we know things like uh, disease is going to be a big one. Probably humans are going to get wiped out by a disease if we don't all kill I've each other. I've been saying that for years. If we okay. don't do what? I've, I've been, been saying you're, that. You've been misspelling it too. <laughs> if we don't kill each other first. No, it's... I yeah. feel... I feel. Um, what about robots? What about them? I mean, how viable do you think they are? How as exhausting a... must this be? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I mean. Like, you, you went to school to answer, what about robots? Yeah. <laughs> no, but like you're saying, uh, I agree with you. Uh -huh. Disease and, you know, or like a bomb or something mm -hmm. is going to kill us. But also I think robots could be like, you know, a thing that kills us. It could be. I wonder if it would wipe out every single last human. Hmm. Well, so here you're talking about a bomb or yeah. like each other. Yeah. Like us wiping out each other. I could see us building a robot to destroy each other. But yes. Yeah, so, and, so and then, but then the robot also then just like essentially, we if we each built like super... Uh, you know, like bombs and robots. I mean, like a bomb is a machine, right? And, yeah. a, and a robot is a machine. And so I guess it, it it's just like depends on where you draw the, the line. Intelligence. It has a face. Does no, no, it oh, no, 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 no. It's like the intelligence of, of uh, how smart is this like thing, this machine that we build. So I suppose what you're asking is, is it, could we build something which we didn't intend to kill us but ends up killing us? Yeah. To Whereas a Skynet. bomb would be something which we intended Tended to, to kill. kill yeah. Uh, so could we build something that it d we didn't intend that could kill us? Yeah. I mean, cars. Um, but I, I don't know. I just, I think we would probably, I think humans are more stupid than robots. And I think that humans would end up deliberately using it to kill people long before the robot decided to kill people. Chris, I have a question for you. Yeah. If there was a race of robots that wiped out the human, way, the human race, what would they do after they'd, they'd done it? What do you think they'd get oh, up to? Oh, man. I guess power down. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> they would just rest. I don't know. I mean, what, what does a robot live like, for? They would want to fulfill 
whatever their I own. I guess. Well, here's were. the thing: is yeah, I feel like if the robot so desired to kill humans, they would have a plan at that point. We're like, well, now that the humans are gone, now we can do. Uh, what does a robot, robot want? What does a robot want? I guess is the is what you're asking. Yeah. Deep down, when we, you know, I I suppose a robot. I guess a robot might have some. It'd have to have programmed some sort of like this happiness. What? This is the best moment of the podcast. <laughs> you think it'd make more? <laughs> this robots? is my favorite thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to figure out what robots want? I mean, like, this is really earnestly, deep right genuinely now. Genuinely thinking really about deep. what do robots want? What is the meaning of life? <laughs> I like taking Chris and having him face a bunch of doors and just be like. <laughs> you, you, you said you like taking Chris and then making him face a mirror and he's like looking at himself. It's like I were a robot. <laughs> Um, so I've, we've got one more question from Brandon. Before I get to the last question, I do have one more thing to read here. Uh, I want to remind everyone, this episode of the podcast is also brought to you by Movement Watches. On the Rooster Teeth podcast, we team up with brands that are trying to do something new. We love innovation and companies that are changing the industries they're in. So when Movement introduced themselves and sent over some watches, we're really impressed. Right now you can see I got the black face with the blue dials and tan uh, strap on. Uh, the company started with two broke college kids that wanted to wear stylish watches but couldn't afford them. They did some research and found out that big watch brands were passing huge retail markups to the consumer. Movement decided that by selling online, they were able to cut out the middleman and provide the best possible price. Movement watches start at just $95. And at the department store, you're looking at four to 500 bucks. Uh, Movement has grown organically purely by supporters like you. So join their more than 1 million social media followers and get a Movement watch today. Go to mvmtwatches.com slash rooster and they'll give you 15% off your entire purchase. mvmtwatches.com slash rooster. Big thank you to Movement Watches for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. And big thank you to the crew who came and refilled our beer stash while I was reading that. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you. We're thirsty tonight. And they all gave them to me. They all gave them to you. That's correct. <laughs> um, okay, the final question from Brandon. <clears throat> I can't wait for the errors. Uh, this one actually might be okay. Let's see. Um, was sex between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals considered taboo? Oh, there was no, there was no. Uh, was it all spelled correctly? Oh, oh, there, there was an alternatively actually. Alternatively, how much did Homo sapiens and Neanderthals get it on? Ah. Oh, yeah. I was mean, it like a every now and then, or is it like, you know? I love this question. Oh, you did it, Brandon. Oh. You like all of my questions, though, right? This they one in particular, though. This one in particular. Because this is actually a hot topic in evolution right now. Like, is it? I am currently here in Austin for an evolution conference, and there have been talks on this topic. So what did you guys come up with? So, <laughs> so the thing is, is that everyone thinks of Neanderthals as this really stupid, like, huge brow. They're, they don't know anything. There's no sophistication there. Actually, they were pretty sophisticated. They had jewelry. They used to probably paint themselves, have tattoos. They, I think um, they found a cave very recently uh, where they had broken off stalagmites and uh, arranged them in a certain way. They had art, so they had culture. And yes, humans did have sex with Neanderthals. And the amazing thing is... You said humans, so were he are Neanderthals not considered human? So... Um, when I say humans, I mean modern humans. Okay, okay. There's a huge debate at the moment whether the two are actually the same species okay, or okay. not. Sorry to interrupt. Um, so, so yeah, when I say humans, I mean um, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals is Homo neanderthalis. Um, and What's that middle one? I can't read it. Uh, Cro-Magnon man. Yeah. Oh, I hate that kind. Of we, 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 let's get into the uh, <laughs> progress of man picture later. There's so many things wrong with that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but humans and Neanderthals. So, we know that in Europe, both used to live side by side for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. But we also now can sequence genomes because it's really cheap, and so we can sequence lots and lots of genomes. And when you're looking at it, when you look at European genomes. You see bits in human, modern human, like living human DNA that isn't from Homo sapiens. And that actually up to like 5% of a person's DNA can come from Neanderthals. And the only way that you get Neanderthal DNA in a Homo sapien genome is sex. And the only way that you get like between one and it's probably normally between 1% and 4% of your genome across all of Europe is having a lot of sex. So it's not just like a one-off 
Like, yeah, they could have had sex. We got drunk one. I yeah. got drunk like, exactly. last night. I, I can't yeah, believe that. Yeah. Yeah. She looks so much better in the nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> the lights on. Um, but no, actually, there is evidence for... Uh, you need to have a substantial amount of sex to get that much DNA into our genome. What's weirder is that they've now got... Um, oh, which one is it? There's another species of human over in East Asia... Oh, it's not Heidelbergiensis. I can't remember which one it is. Um, the, all they have are a few fingertips mm -hmm. and some teeth and evidence of its DNA in our DNA. They don't even have a whole skeleton yet. And they've been able to find a whole species from looking in our own genomes. Was it Dennis Sovin? Yes. I assume the mortality Check. rate. Google, wow. Google. I did not know that. <laughs> so you're saying the, they, they don't even know, have evi like physical evidence of this species. They've only got a tiny amount of physical evidence. So normally you'd want something like a skull. The skulls are really useful. Mm -hmm. But with a few fingertips and teeth, you can't really tell exactly if it's a whole new species or not. Can they map it out with computers as to what it would look like? Like Jurassic Park style? Uh, so DNA. we've got reconstructions of Neanderthals, certainly. Um, they're all over museums, and some of them look really human mm. um, because especially the ones in Europe would have had European ones. They can look at the genome, and we now can look at a genome and almost like 3D print it back from saying, okay, we know, for example, this one had red hair, um, and not just red hair in the same way that gingers have mutations in the, I think it's the M1CR gene or something, um, which is what gives the majority of gingers Red hair. Gingerness. I, gingerness, yeah. Um, and freckles? Yeah, it's the same mutation. It's, it's the same gene with different mutations, yeah. As you may be able to tell from my freckles in this Austin stunt, I am naturally a ginger. Um, but actually, they had red hair from a different mutation. So, but we can say then that this particular individual had pale skin, had red hair. We have the skull, so we can do pretty good facial reconstruction. And so, yeah, and they look really damn human. Um, and a hilarious lecture I went to by people that really study this, trying to work out, well, were they similar enough that they could interbreed and have offspring that will still be able to breed and have, not like donkeys and horses where you get sterile mules. And uh, his response was, well, people have sex with pigs and goats and sheep, so why wouldn't they have sex with Neanderthals? Yeah, you, have to, you have to do it a lot. Like for that. Yeah, but these are really human. But yeah, I it's mean, like you could I, categorize them as human. Because yeah. like so, mortality rate is pretty high, right? So, mm -hmm. so a lot of a good amount of people didn't even make it to yeah, have. But so you had a. There's no condoms. Yeah, but I'm, you just had a, you had to really go like all this. Okay. No, it's it, it, uh, my other. So like, and what ha exactly <laughs> happened to Neanderthals that like the? So they died out. But we, we don't really know why, as far as I'm aware. I think it's just that humans outcompeted them, just that we bred yeah. faster. Well, yeah, um, we, did it. we like to get it on. But the big debate is, well, if Neanderthals and humans were able to breed <coughs> so much, one of the standard definitions of a species is groups that can't breed and have kids. So are we right to actually consider them as a different species and if so it's not a matter of the, the neanderthals died out it's just that they are part of us just got absorbed yeah mm -hmm. i've heard that they're actually today's birds <laughs> <laughs> they had great tits <laughs> uh so i did uh, a dna sequencing uh, several years ago oh yeah and oh, uh, yeah. at the time they they eventually told you like what percentage of your dna is neanderthal mm -hmm. and i'm, I'm 2.8 percent i just looked it up all so right, that's right below a lot of people. I'm in so the 67th percentile. Can I that's look up? quite high. So yeah, that suggests European ancestry. Well, look I at those eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> would you up. say, would you think I have more or less than you? Because I can look up my results too. Oh, ah, look it up. I say you have less. You tell me. Less? Mm -hmm. That would be my okay. guess. Uh, yeah, sure. You're an remember. expert. What was yours, what do you Gus? 2.8%. 2. 2.8. Ooh. Just not even looking at you, I'm going to say less just because statistically more people will have less i mean you well, said you yeah. were 67 percent so statistically you're more likely to have less look it so up i have really hairy legs does that you're 2.1 i have really hairy legs, right, <laughs> really hairy yeah. legs as well I, want to compare. I have a question can you look at someone and then be like well they're about four percent neanderthal I can mean, you look can you tell you could tell like this person probably doesn't have a lot of european ancestry and so probably wouldn't have neanderthal genes maybe they'd have 
like Dennis Avon jeans. Um, but it's not, no, not really. I mean, you can't just think, oh, they've got a strong brow, therefore they have a lot of Neanderthal in them. Do you ever get onto the subject of homosexuality yeah. and how far back? Or has it always been Homosexuality genetic? has been identified in, I think, 196 species. And, or homosexual, I shouldn't say homosexuality. Same sex behavior um, has been identified in about 196 species. It's more of a matter of if we haven't, if a species doesn't show same sex behavior, it's just because we haven't been studying it for long enough or properly enough. Yeah, so you, just haven't, you just haven't seen it. Yeah, but it's, it's yeah. so common in nature. Um, yeah. Sorry, did you have another question about that? That was it. Okay, cool. That, that's a good one. Uh, okay, so thank you, Brandon. All of those were. Uh, were fantastic. Mm -hmm. for, Brandon, did you, for various did you look reasons. yourself up? He's I'm on doing it now. now. Our, our Wi-Fi is very slow. All right, I'll, uh, I'm going to move on to some of my questions. You please keep us updated. When you, when you figure it out, yeah. interrupt. Let Remind me after that. I have a question about skulls for you. I'll ask you later. Cool. All right, so we're on the mic. Do you have skulls like, that I can look at? No. Oh, that's not no, so no. Cool. That'd be creepy if you did. Just Would pointing it? that out. If you had a bunch of skulls to look at? Would it be She'd be excited, though. She's I saying skulls are, that. skulls are We don't have any cool. skull props? So oh, I thought you meant like if you had like skulls. If he's yeah, related like to actual it. skulls. Who? So, so, I, so my science videos on YouTube is called Shed Science because my mum made me get a shed because I wasn't allowed to keep all the skulls and various things oh, that I found that's what, in okay. the house. Oh. So <laughs> for my 18th birthday, um, my parents and I went halves on buying a shed for the garden. And so I kept all of my like skulls and owl pellets and dead insects in there because I wasn't allowed to keep them in the kitchen and dissect them in the kitchen. Was there oh. anything sheddy in there, like a lawnmower, or was it just skulls well, and so bugs? Well, so it we bought shady. it as a new shed, so now it has only my stuff in. Um, yeah, the not even a rake. Or <laughs> <laughs> I think it's got some wellies in. Oh, fair play. Yeah. What's a wellie? What are wellies? Uh, Wellington, Wellington boots, boot. rubber boots. Oh, waders. Waders. No, waders come up higher. Well, he's oh. only come up to here. Oh, damn. Leave it to the Brits, man. Sometimes you'll step in a deep puddle and your wellies will just... The f oh, if it flood. fills up your wellies and then you've got to take them off and turn I feel like that's water. happened to everyone at least once. Yeah, Glastonbury, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Some of my questions. Uh, I, I, you, my question started off as me hating the human body. So one of the questions I had uh, to ask is, why do humans need to eat so much? Like, I'm jealous of, like... Snakes, right? Mm -hmm. Like a snake can eat a mouse and it's good for like two weeks. Yeah. It's like humans are supposed to eat three times a day and even then like you're like snacking or drinking stuff like it's just annoying. So the difference between us and snakes is we are to use the old fashioned term warm blooded and they are to use the old fashioned term cold blooded. What's the new fashion term? Endotherm and ectotherm. Oh, that's way geez. better. Uh, because there are cold blooded animals. So for example, tuna are cold blooded because they're fish, but because they're so big, when you move your muscles, that generates heat. They're so big that they're able to trap that heat and be hotter than their environment. And a lot of reptiles deliberately bask in the sun so that they can be a good five, 10 degrees hotter than their environment, even though they're not generating their own heat. Well, that seems like a waste then. So then we eat so much just to stay warm? But it means that we can live in environments where you wouldn't be able to get your heat from the environment. So these reptiles are forced to stay in places mm. where it's warm. And, and in the winter, they have to hibernate. It's like old people. <laughs> or, or me. I, I feel like I'm cold, but I'm cold all the time. So do you have to eat more in the cold? Uh, so you have to eat more the more heat you generate. So yeah, if you're in the cold, so when you're traveling across the Arctic, for example, you have really high energy requirements. You have to eat peanut butter all the time. You got to take fat bergs with you. <laughs> Peanut butter, I think, is the fat burger of choice. Um, so, yeah, so snakes are cold-blooded. They're not generating their own heat. And heat is kind of what we waste most of our energy on. So they, they're not doing that. And when they're digesting, they just hide in a burrow and don't move. So then if so their energy requirements are much lower, so they need less. But you would want to do like, that, probably. Well, it seems like we could eat less if we all just always wore, like, insulated jackets. And it's like kept our body heat trapped, that way we had to generate less heat. Is our body that stupid that it's always <laughs> trying to generate heat even if we're already hot? But it's like either you can have your phone on and constantly recharging it because you're always wanting to use your phone all the time, including at night, or you could just charge it up once and then have it off all the time. I mean, they're two perfectly viable strategies, okay. but I imagine you'd kind of want to use your phone. And not just have it switched off. All I mean, the battery life is great if you have your phone switched <laughs> off all the time, trust me. But you can't just switch off, though. Well, like reptiles off, can. Yeah. But a human couldn't. Re but because we have this, we've chosen the other route. 
we took the blue pill. <laughs> well, uh, when we're still in the ice, we're still in an ice age, right? No. We're not like a mini ice age. <laughs> no. It's not a little ice age. No. I thought we were at the tail uh, end of an was, ice age. Was, that made, we're always at the tail end of an ice age. It's cyclical. Right, but then is it? Don't we get to the point where we are not? There we was are a mini zero ice age, ice age. like three hundred years ago. But no. Well, <laughs> when human beings when humans uh. So no, I just, I'm, I'm so, it, I'm, backtrack, so, backtrack. Okay. Uh, it's throughout more of our history, human history, were we in like really cold weather or really the, warm there weather? There were periods of our time when we were in an ice age. And being warm blooded, blooded helped. Yeah, that, that would have helped. So we would have had, but the, um, we still can't go as far north as possible. Um, we do have a limit to our range unless you start getting into technology, which is like what we were talking about earlier. Clothes are an amazing form of technology. Sewing is a really revolutionary technology because once you can sew, you can sew your bits of animal skin together so the, the drafts don't get in and you can mm. keep warmer and you can fit it so that you're not kind of in a poncho where your arms are having to stick out underneath. You can Man, move I your arms. I never thought about how cool yeah. sewing is. Exactly, yeah. right? But wouldn't glue do the same thing? Uh, yeah, but it's a lot harder to come by glue than it is thread. All you need is like a, a tusk and some vine to mm. do sewing, whereas glue, you'd need some special plant bulbs. You can use snowdrop bulbs as glue mm. if you're uh, Bear grills. All right, you can also drink your own oh. piss. If you're Bear grills. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, got, I got one more thing to read, then we're going to continue uh, with the questions. Uh, I want to remind everyone, this episode of the Rashid Podcast is also brought to you by Squarespace. With Squarespace, sites look professionally designed regardless of your skill level. There's no coding required. They offer intuitive and easy-to-use tools to help you along the way, and you get a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Start your free trial site today at squarespace.com slash roosterteeth. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the, co the offer code roosterteeth to get 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace. Build it beautiful. You could build a website. Talking, I use Squarespace. Putting, oh, you do? Yeah. It's a good, it's a good uh, service. Yeah, it is. See? You could make your own science. Just Use like Squarespace. Uh, I think it's it's crazy to think how far it's come. Like I used to make websites by coding, you know, by like typing yeah. shit out, and it's way easier now. Can we go back to that just for a day? Just go back to your original site. God no! Why it's not? It's terrible. It'd be funny. It's awful. <laughs> little little April Fools. <laughs> Let's not. I have my uh, my percentage. Well, what was yours, Gus? Two point eight. Two point eight. <gasps> Two point seven. I, was right. I don't know if I should yes. brag about that or Statistics. not. Statistics. Yeah, I'm, I'm more Neanderthal than you. Yeah. I'm first among my friends. Are we not friends <laughs> on this I guess website? not. It's the worst social media site ever. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Let's just compare. But I mean, it could be the truth. weirdest social media site. Imagine if it was like, did you know that your best friend is actually your first cousin? I, yeah, I found <laughs> relatives via it because it'll connect you. Yeah. You can like opt in. I like think I got to do who, this. Someone you haven't who, done it? I want to know how much just goes in a cup or something and send it. No, uh, that you spit into, yeah, yeah into a little I mean, it'd be quite tube. difficult for women to do that. To do what? Uh, to go into a cup. Oh, <laughs> I was just talking about spit. Oh, okay, cool. No, he said <laughs> gob, right? What would you say? Anyway. <laughs> uh, I don't even know what a gob is. Apparently mouth. it's splooge. No. No, you spit, spit. it. Spit. Your gob is gob. your mouth. Yeah. No, your gob is your mouth, and you can gob on someone, and you've spat on them. <laughs> I mean, okay. they both work. We're, we're, making the Brits, we're making the Brits fight now. <laughs> <laughs> Have you never gobbed on someone and be like, yeah, you just gobbed on me? No. I'm from Oxford. It's too posh. <laughs> I'm from Oxford too. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, what we're learning is Gavin just makes up words. Yeah. <laughs> Well, so that's he we, that's that's we the always whole, oh, it's just because I'm British and you Americans won't understand. That's why we, that's that's we, we all my secrets. Always <laughs> secretly suspected <laughs> this. It's it's all unraveling for you right now, Gavin. <laughs> He's getting called. But out. no, I I think that gobbing on someone is a northern phrase. All right. I mean, I, I'm yeah. open to all language. Do you <laughs> really mean the north of England? I use your slang sometimes. Yeah, is it's it not fine. Really, is, is it prosy? No, no, no I, I had to text Northern them English have the weirdest phrases ever. <sighs> That's just the north okay. point. Like my favorite, my favorite word of all time is bung. Bun. Bung. Okay. I just bung it over there. Is that not a thing? They never say bung. What? No. No. What do you use? Toss. He was asking me about bung the other day. You toss it over there. Yeah, you can uh, toss it. No, it's bung over there. All right. Back to the back to the real talk questions. Here. <laughs> okay, this one actually uh, is from Brandon. Also, it got tacked on to one of my questions. Oh, it was an optional. You didn't have to. No, say no, it. it's good. Okay. Why will water kill us if we drink too much? Make mm. up your mind. 
<laughs> well, because your the base of your question was why do we have to drink so much water? Yeah, and then I asked if vodka sodas count, but but why will water count? Like it's something that they say the human body is made up of whatever percentage of water, and that you need to drink all this water. Why is it something that's like so necessary and that's a part of us? Why can it kill us if we drink too much of it? Because otherwise your brain will explode. Pretty much. So you know how cells make up the human body, and a cell yes. is a bag, a membrane bag with a load of water and shit in, in the middle. Am I allowed mm. to swear on here? Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> uh, I just don't check afterwards. You um, said vaginas. <laughs> <laughs> that's not swearing. It's not um, really PG, is it? <laughs> um, oh, and so, I almost just spit take. <laughs> And so you've got all of these salts and minerals and proteins and whatever inside. Um, and if, how much do you remember about high school biology? Do you remember osmosis? That's a resounding Probably no. Probably not, no. Yeah, yeah okay. it's, where, it's, where you absor it's uh, absorbed through like contact pretty much. Like yeah. frogs absorb water through osmosis, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. Look at well you! Um, sorry, I didn't mean to be quite so patronizing there. Um, <laughs> That's pretty good for someone who used to crouch on a toilet to take a dump. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so it's the kind of, if you've got a high concentration in one place of, I don't know, salt in one place and a low concentration of salt in another place, then the water will move to try and equalize the concentrations. So in this case, you'll have all the water moving from the low concentration to the high concentration. So back to the brain. So if you drink a load of water, you're flooding your cells. So around your cells, you've got a really dilute solution because you've got loads and loads of water, far more water than you normally would have. Inside the cells is still really concentrated with all these salts and your ions and your minerals and all those things that they tell you to take. And so all this water will start rushing into the cells to try and equalize the concentrations. This is just chemistry, it's not just, it just happens. Um, this means that because there's now more water inside, the cells expand and your brain, which is even more water than the rest of your body, will all expand. Unfortunately, it's trapped inside a solid skull, which can't expand. So the pressure builds up and builds up on your brain and starts squashing back down on the brain. And then all this high pressure on your brain causes so much damage and strokes and seizures and whatever. And, and you'll die from too much pressure on your brain. I think I've just come up with the perfect evolution for our future. Mm -hmm. Just like a, a shit vent. Maybe like a hole. Well, in the side of your and head, anus. and it just no, it's not the less for actual shit, but this okay. would just be like excess, you know, poison, or I've had too much of this, I've overdosed on that, and it just fires it out the side of your head, just like that. Because that'd it's be called sweet. your anus, dude. But nothing that doesn't work with <laughs> yeah. water, does it? Like if you drink but too much, like uh, to prevent alcohol poisoning, it just, yeah. But just in like hospitals, vent, they vent sometimes some have to drill a hole in your brain to release the pressure. That's a question I had, actually, I was going to follow up with. I read this article about this guy who drilled a hole in his head because he thought it would, like, help his brain breathe mm -hmm. or something. As like, a, And he just did it himself, which was, I thought was crazy. I can't but. remember the name of it. It, it, it was, it like, trepanning or something? Trepanning, that's, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it used to be really common in the same way the bloodletting. They thought that you had bad spirits in your blood, so if you let out some of your blood, it would get rid of the diseases. They thought that if you drilled a hole in your brain then it would let out some of the spirits or whatever, which in itself isn't too bad, but thinking about how um, dirty the medical equipment was in those days, that would, you just get an infection and die. Um, but actually drilling a hole in your, the skull bit would hurt, the skin around the skull, but your brain doesn't have any nerve endings on the, like any touch or pain on the surface of the brain. So you, once you've got a hole in your brain, you can poke your brain and it won't hurt. You won't oh. be able to feel it. So what's a headache? Um, headaches, I don't think they entirely know, but I think migraines is when your blood vessels in the brain have been constricted uh, and then they suddenly open up and let more blood flow through and for some reason that causes pain. I don't so it's really like know pins that. and needles of the brain? Sort of, yeah. It's mm. an engraving from 1525 yeah. of trepanning. So it would just I'm not be putting a, that on the stream. It, it would just be a drill. Put it on the screen, why not? Put it on the screen? Cool. All right. It's not. We've it's given gross. you fair so, warning. So what, yeah, so... It's this, only a you're saying drawing. back then the tools and things were bad and you get infections and yeah. stuff, but like, but in is there any medicine, benefit to we it? still do this for people that have pressure building up in the brain. Some Game of Thrones shit right there. But mm. looks like is there devices. any benefit like beyond like someone has pressure building up in their brain? Like on a day -to -day? No, because then you're opening up your brain, which is a really sterile environment. Like there are so many things in place to keep <laughs> things out of your brain. Um, if I took the top of your skull off 
and gobbed in it. <laughs> and put it back on. Yeah. Would you be doomed? Probably not. Um, I honestly don't know. I mean, there will be white blood cells, so your infection fighting cells around. Um, Even on the brain. And it depends how bad your saliva is. I mean, it's mainly just going to be beer at this point. Well, that's probably fine then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a little beer. That's fine. Okay. Next question. <laughs> what is the Brexit ah! and where do you stand on it? So, I am so glad that this is broadcasting before Thursday. You hate politics on this podcast. This is British politics. It doesn't count. Oh, it counts. I, People are mad about it. Oh. I mean, I've already got into trouble tweeting about it. I've seen it. you. Well, what did you tweet? Well, people are annoyed because I don't live there, and I shouldn't have the right to say what goes on there. Do you get a vote? Yeah, okay. I'm, st- I'm a citizen of the UK. We have a little background here. That's why, that's why I was curious. Okay, so, well, that's okay, why I switched so. to Brexit. Because I was curious to know, because Gavin is British, but lives in the US, but obviously you do not live here. Correct. So I was curious um, to get your, your feedback. So Brexit is a really ugly portmanteau of the words British and exit. Because currently, Britain is within the European Union, the EU, which is a conglomeration of a lot of European countries. And the reason that we have the EU is so that all the different countries can trade with each other. And it started off after World War II, because after two world wars in Europe, we decided that we'd better kind of put some system in place so that Europe doesn't completely kill itself. And so everyone decided that, yeah, there would be peace in Europe and everyone would be able to trade with each other. And part of it was that Someone in one EU country is free to move to any other <laughs> EU country and even live there without a visa. And so work. It, and work there. So if I want to move to Paris, I don't have to fill out any paperwork other than getting a house there. And they won't keep track of it. So, yeah, this is the EU. So you'll notice that Switzerland, which is the white country in the middle, is not part of the EU. Neutral in everything, you fucks. <laughs> <laughs> and there are some countries that aren't. And so originally it was more of the Western ones. And so all those smaller countries on the right... The ones in green um, have been added recently, is, and the even smaller ones in sorry, in, and even smaller ones in white often want to join. Isn't Turkey part of the EU now? Uh, they mm. want to join, I think. Okay, I'm looking it up. It's really protracted joining the EU now because if you want to join the EU, there are a load of rules. You have to have a certain standard of human rights. You have to have certain trade things in place, um, and we joined at the start. And we joined at the start, so we were part of the people that set it up. When I say we, I mean Britain. Never did the Euro, though. Yeah, we decided that this is a great idea for you guys, but (laughs) we just kind of, we want to get all the benefits of the EU without having to actually pay any of the costs of the EU. Kind of like that sterling, right? Yeah. Quid is is great. So we uh, we have the pound, we have pound sterling, rather than the Euro, so... Every other country, probably not every, I'm sure you'll tell me if I'm wrong. Like, well, Sweden doesn't, there are some countries that don't Yeah, the, but the vast majority of countries all have the euro. So if I go to France, I can pay for things in euros, using the same euros as I would pay in Spain or in Germany. This in itself causes problems because, I mean, this is an, an entertaining podcast. I don't really want to go into how Germany has a really strong economy, weak has a really poor economy. Normally, countries can change the value of their currency in order to kind of balance out their economies. If you're all sharing in a, a currency, you can't change inflation rates and whatever. That's far too technical. The most important thing about Brexit is that we are currently having a referendum on Thursday as to whether we should leave the EU. Why do you want to? This is the thing. Why would anyone want to leave the EU? So the Benefits we get from the EU are things like, um, so science and science in particular, we get loads of science funding from the EU. Freedom of travel is really important if you want to work with different labs. Um, But some of the big issues are immigration at the moment. So you've got Donald Trump over here. Um, We have, um, we kind of got Boris Johnson, who's got the same silly hair. Um, (laughs) Did he used to ever go to your school? Because he, he was the MP. He used to go to Oxford, uh, but he wasn't at our college, and he is banned from our college. As he in, our to, student body banned him because he used he, to come to my town and like visit all the schools. Ah, that's before nice. he was mayor, and then yeah, so he was mayor of London. Um, that's him. <laughs> um, I should point out rumours are going round that if we do vote to leave the European Union, our current prime minister will have to step down, and he will almost certainly take over. 
um, <laughs> which isn't great. Um, so yeah, so if so, the thing about having freedom of movement between all of these countries is that when the newer, poorer countries join, everyone thinks, oh, like all of the Polish and all of the Romanians and all of the Turks will want to come to the UK for jobs and they will steal our jobs and then we will like lose all our money and because we're in the EU we are unable to prevent them from coming um, because it's part of being in the EU that there's freedom of movement um, and also the EU is known for so much bureaucracy and so they think well if we were out of that we could save money and we wouldn't have so everyone pays money into the EU according to how big their country is so we pay a lot of money into the EU we actually get the vast majority of that money back in tax subsidies and yeah, that uh, bus is a lie. Benefits. Yeah, that bus was, is a lie. There was a great bit on uh, last week tonight with John yes, Oliver I was last watching night that this talking morning. about he smashed that. it. Yep, yeah, he yeah. killed it. So, um, so the big thing is either we can stay in the EU and have to be subject to all of this EU laws, but at least we have a seat at the table to change the laws in our favour. Yeah. Or we could leave the EU. We would still have to negotiate to be part of free trade because we're a tiny country. We can't cope not trading with our nearest neighbours. So we're going to have to trade with Europe. They won't let us trade with them unless we agree to some rules that they set. I.e. we're still going to have to follow all of the EU right. laws, but we'll no longer be able to negotiate them. So was, I cannot see a single reason why so we should So like leave. on the flip side, right, like you talk about, um, you know, like you said, people are concerned that citizens of foreign co of uh, like poor foreign countries would come in yeah. and take jobs couldn't you just go to a poorer country with like a lower cost of living and then live like royalty since you have more money from a, from a wealthier nation but the best thing is is that there's so much data to show that immigrants um, are a net benefit to society they pay more in taxes and they take in benefits and the NHS which is a huge hot topic in the UK everyone loves the NHS um, a huge number of doctors and nurses come from the EU. So we would lose half of our staff in the NHS if we left the EU. I yep. voted by post. Nice. And to everyone who said I shouldn't vote because I don't live there, uh, do one um, because my family and friends are there. And it affects the future where I may spend a lot of my time. So sod off, you it's wanker. Probably going to be. <laughs> don't you own you like some of those? A little bit of that. Yeah, yours. <laughs> I'm it still a citizen. Be, I will vote. It's going to be the most important vote in our lifetime. Immigration is always an interesting thing to me because um, like, there, I always feel like everywhere around the world, right? Like everyone treats immigration as like a boogeyman. Mm -hmm. It's like it's always, you know, oh, these people are going to come in. They're going to ruin our country. Mm -hmm. But uh, my parents were immigrants. Like I'm a first generation uh, American. My yeah. parents came from another country and moved here. And he, like in talking to me, you wouldn't think that. But they're like, oh, but they're not, from somewhere not else. your kind of immigrant. We're right. talking about the <laughs> other kind of immigrant. Yeah. The right. people wanna <laughs> who want to separate are just a bunch of old racist wank stains, in my opinion. Well, what's interesting to me is how, how um, divisive this, this issue has become, seemingly, uh, Deadly, in the UK. Deadly, literally. Right. An MP died this week. Um, so she was shot dead and stabbed and shot. And the person in, the face, in court, when asked his name said death to traitors, Britain first or something. I'm blown away that the polls are so close. I know, Like, right? where are all the young, smart I... people, you know, to, you know, they don't vote the old across parts. any country, even, thing, even here. Is yeah. that uh, with age, um, the older you are, the more likely you are to vote out. Because it won't affect them. Yay, another thing. If we leave the EU, there's probably going to be another recession. Yay. And, and it, that's actually a global one. Yeah, which global. Is like it's, it's, it's everywhere. It's really interesting being in America because last time I was in America, we had our general elections. And the only thing that you cared about during our general elections on the news was, oh, now David Cameron's been voted in, Scotland might leave, and therefore uh, you, the UK might lose its nuclear missiles. So all you cared about was our bombs. <laughs> but now... Are all it, your nuclear missiles in Scotland? Yeah. Um, I forgot that. <laughs> so, uh, so now... Um, you just told everyone what it they It might are. cause a global recession. Now people, literally someone came up to me on the streets yesterday. I'm so sorry. It sounds like you're English. What, what do you think about the Brexit? It's really weird. Never have Americans been interested in the UK It is politics. actually kind of fascinating. 
that because we're obsessed with American because politics. I go home whenever I visit home and it's just like Donald Trump everywhere I'm yeah. like man it's the same crap following me yeah. around from the <laughs> yeah. US no, really. you never have it the other way until now it's very interesting we probably have more media on American politics just because it drags on for so flipping long than we do on British politics yeah what's your language interesting yeah language please this, this is on the internet <laughs> <laughs> we have to adhere to very strict standards okay back to the the stupid science stuff okay very, very, Sorry. very oh, interesting one very last thing this is going out. Which camera am I speaking to? This one. Okay. Red light. Yeah. Um, this is going out on Wednesday for those of you that aren't Rooster Teeth subscriber people. The the referendum is tomorrow. Go out and vote. For Christ's sake, do not rely on old fogey people to ruin your future. Go out and vote. Is that ageist? What we just did there. Is that sort of offensive to... There's data su to support it. Yeah. Not all the old people are like that. Though. Not I, I, all, but it is... I don't think they're watching. Statistically shown. <laughs> they're probably not watching. <laughs> That's a very good point. Um, okay. Science. Science. Yeah, sorry. Back to the no, no, lighthearted stuff. It's interesting. If humans evolved from apes, why do apes still exist? Why do apes... Oh, my God. Why are there still apes? This is literally a joke that's going around the evolution community. So if um, Americans came from Europe, then why do Europeans still exist? You're right. What's the point? Yeah. <laughs> things up. <laughs> why hasn't everyone moved here? Yeah. <laughs> like a mass Brexitus. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> Donald Trump... Come on, it was better than that. <laughs> Brexit isn't itself an awful term. I don't think you can do a Brexitus. Um, so humans evolved from ape-like ancestors, and the apes also evolved from ape-like ancestors. We did not evolve from modern apes. We both evolved from a common ancestor. Therefore, we can both coexist. Well, it's, yeah, it's like you were saying earlier. It's like uh, dinosaurs. Yeah. Like the core, it's there. It's the same core, and they everyone branched out. Exactly. Yeah. Hence, well. di since hence we're dinosaurs. I, I have a question. Do you like that Fat Boy Slim music video <laughs> where the thing is like walking and then it's evolving as it's walking? Have you I seen that one? I don't know it. Oh. I can't say I listen to Fat Boy Slim. But I, I, what song. I don't tend to like those things because they suggest that Might be right humans here right are now. the pinnacle of evolution. We're pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. I say. Well, I mean, pretty happy with it. We're the really video was made by humans, which is boring. They've got a, hum a pro-human agenda. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're running kind of low on time. Normally we wrap up around nine or so, so I'm going to try to blow through a few of these. Mm -hmm. um, this, this is one that we talked about fairly recently a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. on the podcast. Can a human have too much blood? Yes. And if so, if so, what happens? If they have too... So in mountains where it's really hard to get oxygen, you can often have more red blood cells, kind of what cyclists do when they dope. They stick more um, red blood cells in their blood so that they can get more oxygen. Uh, but the trouble is, is that it makes your blood much stickier, so you're more likely to get clots and die of things like stroke. So if, what does, Heart so attacks. over time, like let's say uh, I get like another pint of blood put in my body, mm -hmm. what does my body do to like regulate it down? It'll just metabolize it. So your, your uh, poo is brown because of broken down red blood cells. So it'd just be really mega brown? That's, <laughs> that's gross. <laughs> uh, it's why jaundice, when you turn yellow, that's when you can't get rid of the brown. It's like a yellowy brown color in your poo. And so your poo is white and your skin is brown. Or so you're yellow. like full of shit then? Yeah. <laughs> what does green mean? Is that a problem? Again, decode? stop with the medical issues. I am not a medical doctor. <laughs> what, one time I had uh, blue and I was really worried. Oh, I remember I ate uh, blue food coloring on, uh, uh, yeah. on cupcakes. Beet tree that always gets you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dying. No, I just ate beet tree yesterday. This was one of day pills. Apparently gives you like neon yellow piss. Yeah. And I, I first saw that, I was like, oh my god, and I'm like, nuclear fallout, I need to get to a doctor. Um, eating crayons. That gives you little colored nugs. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, who eats crayons? I've Games. not done that. LA Beast. Who? That's just a guy who eats <laughs> crap on YouTube. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why do some animals kill their partner after mating? What's more interesting is why do some males feed themselves to the females after mating? Oh. They deliberately throw themselves in the mouth of the females, some of them. So spiders and some man. It's like breakfast I do in that, bed, but, but like yeah. extreme. <laughs> yeah, he does. Um, oh, yeah, 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 very good. <laughs> because, so in these males, um, they've successfully managed to mate. Hooray for a male. That's actually quite a tricky job. It, um, it is. And, as a male can confirm. <laughs> and they would... 
Uh, they, firstly, by feeding the female, she has more food and energy so she can produce more eggs, so he gets more offspring. But also, his next problem is if she remates with a different male, so that then, say she's got 100 eggs to lay, if she only mates with him, he's going to have 100 kids. If she mates with someone else, he might only have 20 kids and she'll have 80 kids with the next male. So he wants to stop her from remating as much as possible. And so if she's too busy chomping down on his body, then he's, she's, not gonna be a, she's not gonna be remating while she's busy eating. And her breath would smell like dead dude. <laughs> 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 yeah, it would. Uh, I, I don't know, that wouldn't stop me. I don't think. There's a pretty girl. Christ, Brent. Looking at you. <laughs> wants to mate. Dead dude breath. But isn't that why dicks trade off have the helmet for like scooping other dude dick other uh, come so out? <laughs> some uh penises have barbs and spines. Um so damselflies and seed beetles in particular. If you look up seed beetle penis, um <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Seriously This is forever. It's full of spines and they use it to scrape out the sperm. No, this isn't right, is it? Yeah, that's what on earth? That's like a Ridley Scott movie. Um, Hold on, I'll, I'll pull it up, it up here. Yeah, so take a second. I got Okay, it. so what you can see in orange, so all of it is the penis that you're looking at. This is an electron microscope. So I'll, I'll get it here in just a they've second. They've coloured it in false colour. Um, and so yeah, so they want to scrape out the sperm from previous males. So is that not the case in humans? Uh, humans used to have penile spines. But why do Cats we have... have penile spines. If you look at your cat... Why do we have the bell end? I don't know. I thought it was... I heard I that thought it's because thing. It was to like go a, in, it like, it's and fine. Then, and then it and to come out, out, you're pulling material out. Yeah, that's what I, I heard the same thing. Ugh. So here we go. So the kind of the beige yellow stuff, those are spines on top of the larger penis. Um, that's a wicked looking dick, by the way. That penis is a mess. And yeah! it will use them to <laughs> scrape out the sperm. It's like a weapon from Game of Thrones. <laughs> you think that's a weapon? You then get um, love darts. So slugs and snails have love darts, which are little, um, literally dart-shaped spiny things that they shoot pheromones into the female's body with. But the spine, they, they don't go all the way around. Does it mean it spins? Uh, like a drill I that... I don't think it spins. Uh, I know that in bed bugs, you have traumatic insemination. Where they're just like, who needs a vagina? I can just stick my f penis through her body wall. Oh, God. Um, and it's called traumatic because, yeah, if it happens too much, she dies. Um, <laughs> this is exactly what I studied, by the way. I just don't, I don't just have she, a really weird obsession. She died how she with, lived, uh, full of dicks. <laughs> 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 oh. No, this is Man. exactly my area topic is Dog. sexual conflict, conflict between the males and the females. Because all these males just like, ah, oh, sod it, stick it anywhere. Okay, and there are also dogs, right, who... who there are dogs. Who, like, after sex, their penis swells up so they can't dislodge. Oh, so right? there are definitely slugs I I heard where about they have yeah. to bite off their penis. But then it becomes female, <coughs> then it can actually live as a female so, slug. So they're always hermaphroditic, but once it's bitten off its penis, some of them have more than one because they're biting it off so many times, uh, it then can only perform the female roles. Um, and why, why would it bite off its penis? Because it's, it gets stuck. Um, and also, like, if oh, okay. like 127 hours when you like. Yeah. <laughs> um, but also, again, back to the you want to stop another male from mating with your female. Uh -huh. If her vagina is bunged up, it's either of, with your penis <laughs> or with a copulatory plug, as we call it. Um, you left your tampon in, love. Oh, never mind. <laughs> essentially, <laughs> uh, so other animals secrete copulatory plugs which seals up the female's vagina after mating so that she can't then go and mate with the animal kingdom is just a, an awful place yeah it really is isn't it mm -hmm. especially if you're female yeah yeah traumatic insemination yeah, yeah i don't i don't want no mm -hmm. let's let's not deal with that so if i was having sex and as a i human? as a, yes okay. as me and i just chopped it off mm -hmm. and it was like in there i'd be like haha not gonna, just not gonna, I like that's the idea, right? Like I, I, I leave uh, it and it's stuck I in there. And I'm like, I, mean, I, I would bet that she probably wouldn't have sex for a while, but only because she'd be traumatized. That the dude just 
the trouble like, is though is that depending on whether you're a shower or a grower the blood would just flow out and it would just shrink and, and just fall, fall out. out yeah you're, you're what, dick's not designed wait, 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 what if i tied it <laughs> after i cut <laughs> that could work here's a question here's or a question. made a balloon it. animal out of it yeah. I have a, wait, I have, I have an you snap question. it off you blow it and <laughs> tie it why why are some people showers and some people are growers i am the <laughs> wrong person to ask that i don't know see Chris, Gus, why? <laughs> the, the, Chris, what's your theory? Well, I, well, I don't know. I have, um, I reckon it's blood chamber size. Blood to chamber me, it's size. one. Of, mm, I guess it would be a thing where it's like some. What do you think? The smallest, like since hitting puberty and being a man, yeah. what is the smallest your penis has ever been? Small man, like an inch. As big as it is right now, after we're talking about <laughs> biting off your own dick. <laughs> It's got to be like a cold, like coming out of a freezing cold pool a cold or inch. something, and you're just like, you're like, I, I, just, I hope no one ever sees yeah. it like this. This isn't gonna me. impress yeah, anybody. Like, I'm the only one who should see it in this, like, you know. I, I've had moments where I've just been like, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Seeing as I can't contribute to dick like comparisons, unless you're a hyena. Um, which well, I'm not. Then you'd have a pseudo comparison. Um, <laughs> All right, well, I haven't, well. Did you know that the largest sperm is 5.8 millimeters long? Of a human? No. Oh. Of any animal <laughs> and comes from a fruit fly that's three millimeters long. So How does that happen? Is it like it's coiled up it's inside coiled of it? Up. It's a Drosophila uh, bifurca. Is, do they only have like one? They. They will only, so in each ejaculate, they will only give around, in the order of, I don't know, 20 to 50? So they're three millimeters long, and they'll have 20 what? to 50 5.8 millimeter long sperm? In one, yeah. in um, one go? This like, is like, the, the, the come, this above. is like come to life, like, if you had to fight a sperm that's bigger than you? <laughs> it's like, theoretically, I mean, they might have to the, do it. The egg is still about 10 times bigger than the sperm. But yeah, I mean, it are coils could, up into a neat little. How package. much bigger are the females than the males then? Oh, uh, they're about fifty percent bigger. You could Not be killed that by that. You could suffocate in it. You'd be strangled. <laughs> That's how did he die? <laughs> but it's actually, it, you know, how peacocks got their long tails because the females chose for nice tails. Mm -hmm. This is the females chose for longer-tailed sperm. Really? Look All right. My, look at my jizz length. <laughs> does he, you does know it? what I like? Long and stringy. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, what I'm into. And the longest penis relative. So this is absolute size. So the fruit fly sperm is bigger than like any whale sperm. But relative to body size, the barnacle has the longest penis. Really? That makes sense. They don't really move around much. Exactly. Mm. If you're not, if you haven't settled next to a female, you need to be able to. <sighs> so is it longer than it? <laughs> yeah, a lot. Many, many, many times. Fascinating. Well done. Uh, but then it's not longer than, than it, no. because it is itself with its penis. Oh. I think if you cut the penis off, it's... It, dep it depends on how well, you define body length. Normally, so when you're looking at an animal with a tail, body length is from, you, like, snout to anus is how you define it. So it doesn't include tail. <laughs> so it's a lot like Chris's tail we were talking about earlier, right? Which, wait, what? <laughs> the tail one is... Okay, a couple more, real fast. What are carbon-based life forms, and what are, how are they different from silicon-based life forms? Uh, there's, as far as we know, no such thing as a silicon-based life form. Carbon-based life form is just something with carbon at the center. Carbon is a really cool element because it's really friendly. It is really good at reacting with other elements and forming really cool compounds. And you can get big ones, you can get small ones. Uh, it can, f like, there's so much you can do with carbon, which is why it's fantastic for making life. You can make proteins, carbohydrates. Um, and most of our plastics are hydrocarbons, so that's carbon-based as well. Um, it stores a lot of energy. Carbon's just a really good, it just happens to be, by chance, really special. And not by chance, we have it as our life form. Why does everyone say silicon is like the alternate? Silicon is the next one down in the periodic table. So it can also form lots, I think it forms four, so carbon forms four bonds. Um, I think silicon is the next one down, so it can also form four, but it's just not as reactive. Um, so we haven't yet been able to artificially make silicon life. I don't think so, no. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, a couple more. And this is another one that Sally told us we need to go to the doctor for. Uh, why do your legs fall asleep when you sit on the toilet for a long period of time, but not in a chair? Why the hell are you 
How long? Who, who asked this? It wasn't uh, so me. it just says someone at Rooster Teeth. But I feel like you're How in a chair. How long are you sitting on the loo for? In a Christ, chair, your, your you anus fiber in your diet. isn't hanging below your knees. Also, mm. I would say, like, chairs are squishy, right? You're sitting in a squishy. It's designed to be sitting for a long period I think of time. The big thing Toilets was, aren't. Yeah, I think the big thing is surface area. So you know how people can lie on a bed of nails? Mm -hmm because it's all spread out, whereas if you were to lie on a single nail, you, it would just pierce through you. Mm -hmm. You're sitting on a ring, so you're not, this bit of your legs isn't, doesn't have anything supporting it. So all of your weight is being spread on a smaller bit of your leg. I imagine that's why, but who is sitting on the loo for that long? I got People the answer, they, they just told me, we'll, we'll say it off when camera's not on. Uh, okay. Will we ever be able to communicate with animals? <laughs> For those of you that couldn't hear, he there was, was a very away. He loud turned around and came back. Yes, um, we already can. Um, there was a gorilla called Coco the gorilla. Mm. Yeah, he had like the the Nintendo arm like thing, right? What? Remember, he he had like the the the, the glove, and he could do. It was in the movie at least. He could do hand signals, and We're then the glove. About would, life. We're, We're not talking about real life. You're thinking about Dunst. We're talking about Congo. I think I think it's Dunst was that Congo? Congo? Yeah, 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 like Dun cool. Dunson checks in or something. Like, <laughs> yeah. right. Jason 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 Jason. Jason. I saw the weirdest documentary the other day about this. <laughs> <laughs> Amy, <laughs> wants yeah, yeah. Amy wants raindrop. Amy raindrop drink. That's Congo. It's Congo. Yeah, you're talking about Coco. Coco. The, so first, I think she was female. I mean, you lot will correct me if I'm wrong. Like, yeah, okay, I'm gonna say now just because Gus has been too polite to bring it up. I was wrong about the airplanes flying off ice thing. Yes, I was thinking that they propelled themselves from their wheels when obviously airplanes don't propel themselves from their wheels. Yeah, that's the past. They propel them. But just Didn't so you bollock that one up as well? I, I messed it up too, so yes, I'm not bringing so it up. Just so you know, I am aware that I got that wrong. You can stop tweeting <laughs> me now. Has that been Thank the last you. year of your life? Pretty much, yeah. yeah um, Imagine doing one of these every week. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so Coco the Gorilla, they trained her how to do sign language. She had and a cat, right? Yeah, she had a pet oh, cat. All right, that's not in Congo. Okay. Um, and, uh, oh, here we go. Uh, oh, that might be a male. I don't know how to sex gorilla. Um, but um, <laughs> just buy to flowers. sex something <laughs> means to determine whether it's male or female. Um, and, yeah, so she had the language capability of a small child. Um, and was able to name things. Um, so in that sense, we could talk. I mean, there's a big controversy as to whether she was actually talking or whether she it was kind of a Pavlovian conditioned response. So she just knew that if she did the right sign, she'd be rewarded with mm. like affection or something. But in essence, isn't that just what talking is? Yeah. Is that if you say yeah. the right thing, then someone says something nice back to you. Um, so yeah, we have that already. Uh, and that's probably as close as we get and probably will get. It's an amazing story of someone who wanted dolphins to talk, and um, they, you're smiling, you know the story. Um, I, think, I think we've, we, we may have played the this animated version, version of it. It might be, so, it, yeah. You did an animated version of a dolphin living in a flooded house and trying to have, and the woman giving her, him hand jobs? Yep. It's fully. Okay, cool, good. We'll, we'll show you the video. I'm it's glad a, you know about amazing. that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, it, it seems to me that, like, if you're trying to communicate with an animal, mm -hmm. that, there's fundamental differences in the way you experience the world so that even communication would be difficult to begin with because you don't have like even a common understanding of what's around you. Yeah, like, where studying do you start behavior from? is really hard because we think in such a human way. So we think that sight is the most important thing. Whereas for most animals, sight is really poor and they rely on smell and we have terrible smell. And so the way we sense the world is very different to the way others sense the world. For example, a lot of flowers that look really dull actually have got amazing patterns in them, but in the UV spectrum, which we can't see. And so bee, they thought, why? how did these bees know which part of the flower to go to when it's just a plain flower? And basically the, the flower had like landing arrows, but in UV pigments um, that we couldn't see. And um, so, yeah, when you're studying these kind of animals, you've really got to get in the mind of the animal and think, okay, just because I can't see that there's a cue there doesn't mean that they can't see that right. there's a cue Why there. do we have that UV filter? Because some people get them cut off, don't they? Mm -hmm. like, why do we need that? Um, I don't know for certain. Partly UV is what causes cancer, so I don't know if it protects against retinal cancer, cancer mm. of the eyeball. Um, oh, that'd be bad. It would be. Um, and, I mean, we have pretty rubbish color vision as it is, there are species of squid that have, I think, so we have three different color cells, red, green, and 
Blue. Blue, yeah. Um, they all slightly overlap. Um, birds have four, if I remember rightly, and some species of squid have something like 12. Damn. Damn. Yeah, so it's one of those questions like, can you imagine a color that you've never seen? Like, you can't. You, you, you have no idea what these squids right. can see. It's interesting. Yeah. Okay, and we can only represent that with color that we know. Anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Last one, it's kind of a two-parter. Mm -hmm. What is CRISPR, and will it really be able to bring back animals from the dead? Okay. CRISPR is clustered... Oh, shoot, I tried to remember it. Clustered repeated intervals... No, C-R-I. Uh, palindromic repeats ends in. It's uh, where you get a string of DNA, and you've got, like... So your DNA has got A, T, Cs, and Gs as your different letters of the code, and you'll get, like... ATC, 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 over and over again. Um, and so CRISPR is basically the bacterial immune system. So we get infected by bacteria and viruses. Bacteria can also get infected by viruses. And the viruses will insert their DNA into, or RNA, into the bacteria. And it will go into the bacteria's genome. So the bacteria have a genome just like we do. It'll insert its DNA, and so they need an immune system to get rid of this viral DNA. So they have an amazing system, which uh, we found out about 20, 30 years ago, that they can spot viral DNA and cut it out with these molecular scissors called Cas9. There we go, that's Cas9. Um, molecular scissors. Yeah, DNA enzymes. Do you have to sharpen them? Uh, no, uh, but you can blunt them with heat. Well, not blunt them, but just get rid of them. <laughs> uh, and so this had all been discovered and we knew that. And then two women, I'm going to point out, women in science, woohoo! Uh, Jennifer Doudner and Emmanuel Charpentier. Uh, I was lucky enough to interview Jennifer Doudner, actually. She is primed to be one of the next Nobel Prize winners. Nice. Really, this is how big CRISPR is. Um, they realized, oh my God, we've discovered this natural technology that can find very specific sequences in the DNA, very specific letters in the code, and cut it at that exact point. And once you have that technology, and what they did was they managed to manipulate it so that we could use it in a lab and choose which bits of DNA. So we can say, okay, I want to always cut at the ATTCGA bit. And now you've got a pair of scissors, and you can tell the pair of scissors where to cut anywhere in any genome. And once you can cut things, you can get rid of a gene. So say you've got a gene for a disease, cut it, stick in some junk DNA in the middle, you've got rid of that gene for disease because you've rendered it null and void. Or you can cut in a neutral bit of the DNA and add in another gene. And so maybe someone's lacking a gene for an essential protein and you can stick in the gene that they're missing and you've got rid of another <coughs> genetic disease. And so any time that you want to change genes... CRISPR is just revolutionizing it because it's more effective, so it's more efficient. It's only cutting where it's supposed to, and it always cuts where it's supposed to, or not always, but a lot better than all the previous So if I've got some neutral DNA, yep. and if homosexuality is genetic, can they just cut me in some gayness? <laughs> if they wanted to? <sighs> can they find that? There is not a single gene for homosexuality. Okay. Um, there is a, almost certainly a huge genetic environmental component, the two working together. Um, for a more simple trait, <laughs> say um, you wanted to... So one thing that often comes up is you have green fluorescent protein, GFP. This is a protein that they found from a jellyfish that glows under UV light and... Um, in the sea, and so in biology, we use this protein to stick it in other things. So I work on fruit flies. I'm trying to breed a line of GFP, green fluorescent protein flies, that glow in the dark so I can spot, oh, these are the ones that I marked, those are the ones that I didn't mark. So if we did that on you, yeah, the cells where you injected your um, CRISPR-Cas9 system, they would glow, but because you're already formed as an adult human, you would need to infect every single cell in your body with this, when I say infect, it's like a good form, of, it just means getting it into your cell, um, with that to do it. Whereas if you did it in embryos, which is the really controversial bit, then one cell becomes every cell in your body, so you only have to do it once. 
and then the whole of you would have that new. So that's that's this, crazy. this led me to a follow-up question. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you talked about embryos. So I've, I've heard talk about CRISPR when it comes to working with embryos, the potential for creating designer babies. There's a paper last year. It was the first to do it on human embryos. Right. And you talk about, you know, you could set things, traits like hair color, yep. eye color, uh, and sex, I believe, are the ones that they know mm -hmm. they could probably do right now. Mm -hmm. Drawing the line when we're able to fully utilize CRISPR to do, you know, make any changes we wanted to, could the human species become as, could it have as much variety as like, say, dogs, where we could have different types of humans with different traits and really exaggerated features? As far as I'm aware, genetically, dogs are all very similar. I mean, yeah, so looking at them, what we call the phenotype, is vastly different. But I think genetically, they're all quite similar. Um, could we create designer humans yes uh we're not there yet will we ever get to the point it it then moves away from being a scientific issue to a moral issue right because science tells you can you do something and ethics and politics tell you should you do something? yeah you should um so how long like should i wait should i put it off having a kid so again, I really, do I really not, would love to design do it. Do not put off having a kid. I would because love in to the design same it. way that women have biological clocks. What most people realize is that men also have biological clocks. Um, their sperm gets longer. <laughs> no, in that their sperm gets more and more mutated. So that firstly, their fertility decreases over time. I say that your fertility decreases over time. Um, so it will be harder for you to have a kid. So just jizz in a cup I, now. But also, your sperm will have more mutations, so you're more likely to pass on a genetic See, I, I always knew there was something weird about kids born from old sperm. You just mm. confirmed it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, old, old, old did sperm you know babies, someone who was actually... Old sperm babies are weird. <laughs> they're actually like 80 years old. You ever met someone who was like, whose father is really old? There's something wrong with them. They're weird. Oh, I suspected it, and now science proves yeah. my th my suspicion was correct. Are there so. no moral issues with making a fruit fly glow a different color? According to the UK government, no. Is it because it's not? It's because it's not a vertebrate or a cephalopod. So mess with it. Yeah, basically, <laughs> if it's a vertebrate, so if it has a backbone and or just bones in general, um, if it can stand up for itself, or if it's a squid <laughs> or an octopus, then or cute, it's covered by. Um, why why a squid or an octopus? Just because they're because they're intelligent. Okay. Oh. So um, because they have crazy brains. Um, and so if you're one of those, then you have to apply for a home office license to research on them. So if I ever mm. see a glowing octopus, I think no, there's been some foul play here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Unless it does it naturally. I mean, octopus have crazy pigment colors. I think I've seen some cuttlefish that exactly. can glow and do crazy things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They look like And sometimes spaceships. they'll eat glowing like algae or bacteria and then kind of, instead of digesting them, put them in their skin. Oh, wow. So that they'll glow. So I really like wow. these nachos. Wow, you look you look really good, guys. You know, <laughs> Thanks. You're glowing. <laughs> it is actually true that if you eat too many carrots, it will turn your skin orange. Because the beta carotene in there um, is slightly toxic. And if you eat too much of it, you can't get rid of it. Uh, so it's like vitamin A. It's when the um, Antarctic, I want to say, Arctic, Antarctic explorers died from eating too much seal liver. Because they're eating too much vitamin A. Um, apparently, no, no, no one else. I won't. Mm -hmm. That's a bad example to use then. Um, but yes, yeah, so vitamin A is the same stuff that you, Raccutane, that you use for acne. It poisons your skin. That's English for vitamin A. I, I got it. I got it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, oh, look at that thing. Yeah, there we go. Cute. Um, but yes, yeah, so if you eat too much beta carotene and your body, you're eating more than, faster than your body can get rid of it, your skin is actually a really safe place to put things because it's essentially dead. Like nachos. Mm. Like, so it's quite like a Tattoos? storage organ. It's a storage organ. Does it start to smell like carrot? No, because it's just the pigment no. that's dangerous. What does a carrot really smell of anyway? I don't um, know. And so, yeah, you'll end up with orange. In, if you eat loads and loads of beta carotene, you will end up with orange skin. Fascinating. Well, I, I, people on Twitter right now are loving it. They say are everyone, they? everyone's saying it's like their favorite podcast of the year, which makes me feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad everyone else enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for joining us again, Sal. We got to do this right. way more often than can every you, year. And can a half. you take Brandon with you to this evolution conference? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's I literally wanted, just around the road. <laughs> I I'm going to put some here. glasses on and go speak. So um, here on the on uh, the screen, we had your Twitter handle at Sally LePage Sally and Page. your YouTube channel, youtubecom slash Shed Science. Shed. Apparently, I have a really bad accent for S H E D Science. What do they think it was? Shed. Oh, yeah. I thought I always thought it was shed. Okay, it's shed, like yeah. a shed. You know, like a garden shed. 
Good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. That's it all right. was, the time always flies by whenever uh, whenever we talk our terrible science with you. And uh, thanks everyone for watching and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Hey. A lot of penis Hi. talk. Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. What? This week brought Sorry. to you by Sorry for talking on the Don't podcast. Talk while our very important sponsors have their graphics on screen. I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. I'm Gus. I'm, I'm Gus. I'm Bernie. I'm Gus. <laughs> Objection, say objection. too long. Why can't I poop without wiping anything? Why can't I poop without wiping, oh. can't I poop without wiping saying, Like I used to do perfect poos. You poo one out, yeah. you wipe, nothing. Like. Like, how, how long? Like, how long? Oh. <laughs> 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 okay. Like, like, like.